Yeah, buddies. The Bennington Show, Wednesday. Hump day, Wednesday. <laughs> I'm Rob Bennington. I'm Gail Bennington. We're having just the uh, time of our life here. It's the it is the only father daughter radio show in the history of radio. Um, I'm just going to say this because uh, I feel like it's a cheap shot, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, we were, all went out to have burgers last night, and Chris had a cookies and cream <laughs> milkshake that looked so adorable. That's so cute, Chris. Now, I'm going to say something in his defense. He wanted a black and white, and then the woman said, cookies and cream? Will that do? And then he didn't have the wherewithal to handle that. I yeah. just said yes. It had little cookies in it. It was like a little girl's That's special adorable. day milkshake. There was a cookie crumble around the rim, which I had to uh, peel off with a knife, and I did, and I ate it. Uh, and yes, just a nice Oreo. It's a, a fucking uh, whipped nice. cream. It was, uh, it was delicious, but I felt silly. It was uh, set up as a dessert, and... Um, I guess it did turn out to be a dessert. But he went through that cookies and cream milkshake so fucking fast. I mean, he could have won an award. That house did. It was delicious. What a cute kid. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I always take your uh, producer to work day. <laughs> uh, Vito, you could not go because you're doing, you said, intern work after the yes, show. Yes, I was doing loading of the show. Which you were you were you mad about that, or were you like, good, I don't have to go out and eat with these guys? Uh, no, I would have loved to save the $18 I spent on my dinner <laughs> and went and ate with you guys. <laughs> it's real funny that they don't think they have to chip in. <laughs> yeah, why if not? If we're all together, he was going oh. to save, not <laughs> offer to pay. <laughs> it's about the experience. Yeah. Now, the, uh, what, what was your $18 dinner? Uh, I went to uh, Sweet Green a few blocks away. <laughs> salad? Yeah, it's a, it's a nice salad it, place. Did you get a warm salad? It is a warm salad. It's a warm, uh, it's a warm grain bowl. Now, uh, what's, the, what's the intern problem right now? Well, yesterday, uh, Vinay had to run out right after the show. Today, he's here. He's out at 3 o'clock today. So there's just scheduling issues all around. All right, send Vinay in. He's already missed two days. Two days, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and now he can't learn to do... It's there he work. is. He's also, he's also taking, yeah. taking a sweet time getting in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a fast walker. Sorry. Vinay. Vinay. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Good to uh, see you guys. Now, we it's know... So yeah, it's nice to have you back. <laughs> this is... Uh, well, you've already missed at least half the days you were scheduled for, correct? <sighs> And yes. I didn't even know you were in here yesterday until our uh, guest came in. And I almost brought you in with a towel and let him. Oh, that would have been a dream. Yeah, let him work <laughs> you over. Well, that's why I was thinking to myself, you would have enjoyed it, but you just missed half the fucking. You, you missed two out of your first three days. Why well, give you the dream? I have well, class. But why did you take a uh, an internship for when you have class? You understand? That's yeah, the, that's yeah. the problem. Mm, yeah. And you agreed yeah. to the times that we asked you to come in. With. And then when you said that you couldn't make it in because you were doing work, you put a pouty picture of yourself <laughs> up. And what did it say, uh, it Vito? Said, Please give me attention. <laughs> True. You could have had some here. Who? <laughs> <laughs> At the fucking internship. But Vito wouldn't have said that I was in. You're not in charge of the end. I'm not. You know, there's a reason because you scream. You okay. know what I like about Vito and Chris? They're bad cop, bad cop. Yes. <laughs> Bad cop, worst cop. <laughs> and that's something Vinay has to look out for in real life. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. This should be a safe place for him. All right, so you have a scheduling problem. Yeah, a little bit. Now, you still, your schedule is free enough for you to do stand up, though, right? Of course. Okay, good. That's nighttime. That's yeah. past 9 p.m. You also lie about your schedule sometimes because yesterday I had to text you. Because you told me a completely different thing than you told Chris. No, no. There was no lying. It was more miscommunication, we'll say. You literally told me you had to leave today by 2, and then Chris told me you had to leave. On Thursdays, I have to leave by 2, because I have class at 2.20. The show starts at 2, though. Yes. <laughs> I know. That's what time The show starts. started at the same time last semester, too. If no, I know. Well, see, I do the grunt work, right. nine to two. Uh -huh. I do all of the stuff. Working nine, nine to two. 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 Nine to, yeah. What a way. Another lie. He comes in at 11. Yeah, you've never been here at nine before, dude. All right. So the viewers the don't thing. know that. You guys are responsible <laughs> for making this schedule yeah. work. 
I can't hear <laughs> the thing that you're surprised every fucking time he doesn't come in. Now, I already talked to HR. One of you two is going to be fired. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, please let God. it go. I have a bad feeling who it is. <sighs> Would you be happy if one of them was fired? Yes, but I won't say which one. We, you, know. we know which one. We all know, dude. It's the one that you turned the audience against, Peter. <laughs> had to cry, huh? No comment. That's what you want to do in radio, no comment. It's uh, <laughs> really the thing. Talk, talk <laughs> no, not give anything back. Build suspense, though. Yeah. Build suspense. This is your I don't think for anybody. Attention, Until buddy. HR finishes everything, Yeah, you know, I'm just keeping the ambiguity up. All right. All right, well... So you're going to have to work out his new schedule, right? Yeah, and hopefully he doesn't lie to me or try to gaslight us. Why are you <laughs> gaslighting <laughs> all of us? This is amazing. I feel like we're in a bad relationship. <laughs> a toxic relationship. Are you are you even familiar with the term gaslight? It's I guess it's like when someone lies to you and then says, no, I'm not lying, and then makes you feel crazy even though you know you're being lied that to. That has nothing to do with the movie Gaslight. <laughs> <laughs> In Chris's defense, that is what I am doing to Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. right. Let's just go to Vinaya. <laughs> Hold on. I got to wait till the vape fucking fog <laughs> passes by. Mm. So he's not the full time intern, is what we're being. But, yeah, he's not a full time intern, but a part time intern is already a full time intern is already a part time person. So a part time intern. Right, just, uh, just stop it. You're not even making sense now. This whole thing All doesn't right? make sense. Can Mackenzie just come in every day? I wish. She's the great <laughs> That would be my fucking dream, guys. <laughs> well, you don't say she that to great. her. You don't tell her how great she is. I she talks her. like All Amy the Adams. times. Oh, he does? All the time. In front yeah. of me, too. Like, Amy, yeah. uh, Mackenzie, you're nice on Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie, you're doing a great job. And then he'll look at me like, and okay. I'm expecting like a kid. Now it sounds like you're gaslighting. Are you trying to drive no, me nuts? If two people said you want to make if, me cry again, if if two people, you have no problems with that, huh? No, not at all. That's so interesting to me. Like younger people are so like that would have like if I would have cried at work, then I would have went home, stabbed myself in the neck, <laughs> and tried to see if I could reboot <laughs> my life. I wouldn't have been able to just cruise with it. I wasn't allowed to cry in first grade. <laughs> that would have been the fucking end of me. My, my 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 father was not happy with me crying ever. Yeah, fathers hated tears. I mean, look, he called me a bitch for biting my fingernails. Yeah, well, you were. I mean, <laughs> it's the way you do it, the dainty way you did it. Was it was a nervous household. <laughs> oh, I've cried like three times here. Why? What? Oh, this is the best place. You just go into the bathroom, lock the stall. There's some good music playing. What are you crying about? Just your own personal life? Yeah, like growing most up of it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, doesn't yeah, have to growing do Growing up work. brown, you know. Oh, stop you it. Know? <laughs> that is not. Right? Huh? It's the best time to be brown. I mean, we're not in England. You know what I mean? That's where it's a terrible place to be brown. Um, Vito, should Earl be in charge of the interns? Because it doesn't seem like it's your thing. I, I don't know if Earl should be in charge of the interns, but I could give him a try with Vito. Uh, look. If that's the case, if you no longer can, because we keep taking things away from you because they turn out <laughs> like this. But can I just give you this thing? Why would you think guys would fucking respect somebody who wears that cap into work every day? You know I mean, you're not presenting yourself like a like a manager. So I I, may, I need to dress the part is what you're saying. I'm just saying this. If if we were bringing interns in for ski patrol, <laughs> you would be dressed properly. But we're inside. That cap is ridiculous every day. Maybe one day when it's a terrible frozen day. Look, it's not the same cap every day. I have multiple colors. And <clears throat> You see what I'm saying, right? Have you ever seen any of the VPs wearing their fucking ski cap anywhere? No, I've not By seen. By the way, does that have a name now? It doesn't. It seems like that. Beanie, fucking, huh? Mini yeah. beanie. <clears throat> it's not a, it's mi not a beanie it? though. It's a it's mini beanie. <laughs> oh, my head's put up so beanie. Large. Put up the. Just put in beanie and then look at the. Well, they, they are on these beanies now, and they're not. <laughs> a beanie is something else. A beanie is nothing a, a grown man should be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, there's a there's a, a lot of different beanies. Like they're it's getting a lot of oh, styles. Oh yeah, in. there's there's a lot of variation with the beanie. We also call them scullies. <laughs> Who's weak? Just pretty much me. Skull caps. Okay. No scullies. Doesn't matter, Vito. At the end of the day, if this is you. This is what makes you comfortable. And these are the fucking hassles that you have every day. 
I'll change my look if it means I'll have an intern who respects and does his work. You're going to wear a suit every day? You're going to get one of those. (laughs) (laughs) Although you won't do your work is what you're saying. (laughs) Yes, that's what he's saying. By (laughs) saying it like that, you sound like a helpless fucking woman. Okay? You sound (laughs) like when mom is like, wait till dad gets here. You're not being an aggressive woman the way you should be. You realize how many of you are in fucking Congress now? You should be wearing white every day as a way of saying fucking time's up. That would be cool, by the way. Yeah. Just as a woman, I'm going to point that out. (laughs) A woman is not the worst thing you can be. (laughs) Oh, boy. Here we go. Well, I don't know what to do about you, uh, Vito. How's this on me? Because (laughs) your fucking problem come into my world. That's how it's on you. You were given a responsibility. It should never come back to me. Why don't you just say, oh, Ron, I forgot to tell you. Not only can I not manage time and production, I also can't manage people. Then I would go, oh, okay, that's the problem. But once you've been given something, a responsibility, it should never come back to me. Okay. I should only hear, I should be like this. How's that thing working out, Vito? And you tell me, great. That's the way life should be. (laughs) Not Vinay sitting in here busting your fucking balls and making you look weaker in my eyes. I don't. I don't see how I'm looking weaker when he's said everything he's said. He's all he's saying is he doesn't do work. He sucks at his fucking can job. I, wait, can you tell me who went to bat for him and who laughed? And you brought him back without me knowing, and I started fucking laughing. I didn't bring. See, and then you said me and Chris will stay on top of this. I'll go back and find you the fucking thing because I'm I. When he when I when I found out he was here, I fucking busted up, and then when I got the details in an email, I fucking just wrote ha 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 ha. In all caps. Yeah. <laughs> Vito just doesn't want to see me succeed. No, I would love to see you succeed because then I wouldn't have to have a fucking tough day at work. Guess what? <laughs> some people are natural bottoms. Some people are natural tops. He's a top. <laughs> He's not. You're a, top. a fucking God bottom, damn right. Dude. You're acting like a bottom. You're not acting like a top. It's weird that this top cries too. Like that's the interesting dynamic here. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, st- the dynamics have changed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you have a job that you haven't cried at? Yes. <laughs> I try not to cry at a fucking funeral. <laughs> I cried once in twelve years. Everyone thought I was faking it. <laughs> no, you cried once before that too. <sighs> When you said you couldn't be an intern oh, anymore, no. just literally a, a fucking spot opened. And we were saying like, hey, Chris would be perfect for this. And he comes in <laughs> and he's like, guys, I really got to be a, an intern for it. And he, he wasn't making any fucking sense yeah. at all. And we were fucking laughing. Because you already out. had something planned for him. Yeah, well, the other guy, what was the other guy's name? Pitsy. Pitsy uh, was, you know, he lived way out in Long Island and really was terrible at radio. I mean, he was just <laughs> maybe out of everyone I've ever had. He had the least grasp on how anything should work on. He didn't really pick a lot much up. No. He like, made, I picked up more of my internship than through his internship at employment. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, Pitsy was like, I'm uh, leaving. I'm ma- getting married. And plus, I'm not good at radio. I'm not going to do radio anymore. <laughs> and he's like, I think Chris would be great. And we were like, yeah, okay. And then Chris came in, and when he was doing that, I go, didn't Pitsy tell you? Mm-mm. No. And then his fucking literally watched his tears dry. Aww. It was his very emotional dry. day. Yeah. I was really set to just never see you guys again. Aww, and then you Pitsy. and your mom went to a nice steak restaurant in mm-hmm. Brooklyn. It was... <laughs> <laughs> so Chris was the original me. No. Yeah, I guess he was. Well, no. I showed up every day. He was doing his job, and he was recommended to have a future job. You would not uh, be recommended for anything. Vito, <laughs> can I explain something to you, right? When you start redlining, there's nowhere to go okay. from there. Where do we go from here when you're that angry? Sorry, I got to fucking calm myself down. But why did you think this was going to work with Vinay? And you know what? Vinay... Is enjoying all this. <laughs> Look at how happy I he didn't is. Think you're giving ball. him the attention. The attention he's so great. <laughs> I didn't as you show it on a selfie. <laughs> I didn't think this was gonna work. I didn't go. You know what? Let's give Vinay a second chance. I had an intern. She couldn't get college credits for this, I guess, and dropped out. And he was the last one left in the pool. He was my last resort. Is that your way of building somebody up? But the is that, the last is that some- your way 
of like turning this into something big. Hey, man, you can come back. I am back. I mean, you can fucking work harder, maybe. Oh, Show that's up a every story. day. Or yep, look sorry. at me when I'm trying to help you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know that, that was quick. I'm going to be you honest. You don't sound like a manager. You sound like this is a Big Brothers with a fucking crack baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. You know, I was like you once, too. <laughs> is this How's scared the, uh, straight? stand-up career coming along, Vinay? Actually, I've been really good recently. Yeah. 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 Good. yeah. So that's where your real shows. heart is, right? So why don't we get him involved in fucking stand-up stuff? Why is he involved in radio shit? Because he doesn't... He doesn't have a dream of being a radio guy. He has a dream of having a big stand-up career. Well, I mean, I'd like to do voice acting. I'd like to like be on air. So well, let's hear your voice acting. Like, hey guys, what's up? That's it's that's my voice. Works. That's pretty good. So yeah, it's like a like, cartoon voice squirrel. Acting is just your own voice. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just my normal enunciations. All right, so you're patterns. saying your voice is so special, so special. People should pay you for it. Yes. All right. That's the goal. All right. Well, I hope you get it. You know, there is a certain comedian who told me like that Benet is unteachable. He's got his own way, which I don't think is a negative. You know what I mean? Mm. There are some people that maybe they're finding their own path. But doesn't take notes, you mean? It... Doesn't, uh, no, doesn't listen to the way a joke is written or anything. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Rick? Yeah. Yeah. And then when he told us the other day, his, you know, opening bit, which was just pro stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Like that was my closing bit. Oh, it was the closing bit. That the fact that anyone in the audience not only could think of that, but has (laughs) thought of that, and they're wrong. You know what I mean? (laughs) So rather than trying to figure out, like, hey, how can I be new and fresh? But fucking uh, Rick told me he's like, no, he's, you know, he's uh, he's doing his own thing. Which again, I'm going to say this: I would never say that's a bad thing because I don't know where people are going. Might take them years to get there. Right. I don't know. So I would never tell somebody not to go with their own gut. That's yeah. the whole fucking point of this. Um, I will say to Vito, I think you write great jokes, but managing people? No, that's not your thing. I'm going to take your criticism and work on management. I don't know whether you can or not. You know what I mean? And that's not a negative thing either. Maybe that's just not your thing. It's, there's certain people that do it well. Um, Chris Stanley. Mm. is also here yeah, so I'm, you know i'm in the room yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you for acknowledging my presence i mean how many times have i said i would love to move all the guys around i would love to move all the guys around or we have this fucking thing that we want to be marketed all that stuff isn't ever implemented so i can't sit around and get mad at vinay for not implementing things it's the same fucking thing i know you've got to uh pump soon but i want to tell you this gail there's uh I think this is one of the um, better things out there right now. This, I don't know whether you've seen this uh, seven-year-old kid. And I don't know where he's from. I'm going to guess Jamaica because they care about uh, running more than we do. But this is the fastest kid in the world. Uh, you don't have it on the iBank, Chris? I'm uh, finding it uh, elsewhere. Uh, here's another thing I brought up before, right? Yeah. We have these things. You know I'm going to go to them. And we could uh, be ready to do that. So it's under, if you go to the iBank, this seven-year-old can beat you in a race. Just hit play on it and watch this kid come flying out of the blocks. (laughs) (laughs) Look at at him being the child of the kids. Oh my God, that's insane. Now, I remember when I was in elementary school, running uh, the race with the other kids was the most important thing. This is unfair. That's incredible. Is he juicing? Look, at, here's the thing that's so <gasps> Look remarkable. Look at that stride, too. You can see the kid who is in second is, like, way ahead of other kids, and he's beyond right. that kid. Right, he's tripling Like, people. he's another level. This now, do kid we, is amazing. Do we know where? I mean, I thought that he might be Jamaican because of his hair and the fact that Jamaica, the national sport, is sprinting. <laughs> you know what I mean, like right, they yeah. watch sprinting on TV prime time. And that's where uh, Bolt came from. And they call this kid Blaze. Dude, this is amazing. This kid oh, is- I didn't even know that he, you had, he had an Instagram you could follow. I'll fucking watch this kid every day. <laughs> Come on, Wait, Blaise. is that him playing football? Yeah. All right, let's, let's see, see it. it. He's real. 
Damn! Yeah, shit. Oh my god. Blaze is incredible! This yeah. seven year old's breaking ankles. <laughs> yeah, he is. Now, the weird thing is, of course, that doesn't mean that he's going to grow up to be great because a lot of people peak yeah. at certain ages. Um. Earl, for instance, when he he was a seven year old baseball player that just had everyone in the big leagues talking, and then every year it got progressively worse. Looks like Florida. Looks really? like he might be from Florida Dale from these other videos on his like dad's Instagram uh, YouTube account. The, it says eight one three, so I'm get, that might be the area code, right? Eight one three is Florida. Mm-hmm. I think it's a Tampa somewhere. So. Yeah, eight one three is the Tampa area code. Just right. Yep. Now, uh, Earl, when did you start playing organized ball? Uh, 10. 10 years old. And right away, everybody was calling you the phenom. What <laughs> position did you play? I pitched, I played first base, and I could play all three outfield positions. And the stroke was just like a natural. Uh, they were calling him a young Rod Carew at that time. <laughs> like and the, the weird thing is Rod Carew was young when this was going on. <laughs> it was even a younger. But it was just the sweetest fucking stroke of all time. The spray hitter. I could go to all fields, hit a little power. Spray, huh? Punch yeah. and Judy, right? Just trying to fucking right. drop in a fucking Texas league. No, just like right no through the box. whatsoever. Everything right through the box. <laughs> right through the box. <laughs> Look how proud he is of his young self. Uh, this is another uh, interesting one. This is up on the eye bank. Brett Michaels' daughter is a smoke show. Now, Brett Michaels, of course, is from uh, Poison. And then his daughter is going to be a uh, Sports Illustrated swim model. Which is about as high as you can go in this business, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think so. And that's like the kind of model you want, because that means curves. Yeah. That's yeah, the kind that of means model. curves. I thought that that was lumpy butt, but it was bad shadows. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, see how that looks like? Yeah. It's holding. I'm going to fire a fucking photographer over there. Right, let's see some of her other pictures. Yeah, she seems talented. Can I just say something, though? <laughs> um, I think she's... she's the tan is almost too much. Too tan? You know, you don't want yeah. to. You don't want it to be an unnatural tan. Um, yeah. And I know you're a fan of tan lines. I've been a fan of tan lines my whole life. Um, now there, it looks like she would be in poison uh, with that <laughs> she outfit, does, with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> now, who's the bomb? Because I know he was with uh, a couple of famous women in his life. Um, he was. Uh, I don't know whether married or dating, but he was a, a real cat. All right. So that's not the one that uh, that it was fa- famous for, right? No. I'll find out the other famous wives, but that Christy Gibson is the one who's the mother of uh, his daughter. Well, I th- doesn't Brett have two different sex tapes out over the years? I remember that he did have one. Yeah. yeah there might have, another one might have came out after Rock of Love was popular. Yeah, but that's not. You know what I mean? That's not going to be anybody. <laughs> Any woman who goes on Rock of Love is not fucking famous. <laughs> yeah, he was with Pamela Anderson for a while. Pamela Anderson, there was a sex... She's the one who had two sex tapes. Yeah. Not him. She yeah, had she him did. and... Uh, Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. And by the way, The Dirt is coming out as a movie. I don't know whether you've ever heard of the book. Um, the same guy who did the game, that thing of how to seduce... Women oh, yeah, yeah. He wrote one of the most, uh, well, it's almost like an oral history, right? And those guys yeah. were just filthy, <laughs> dirty, fucking. Really? Yeah. Trashing each other, trashing everyone around them. Oh, still, and that's a band that's still not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame after all these years. <laughs> they still didn't make the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Had a couple major fucking hits. Always have been a, you know, an arena band. Once they go their own separate ways, yeah. you know, they're playing a small club. Yeah, they and they made a deal where they can't reunite. Like, one guy can't just say, go out as Motley Crue. Yeah. They have to go out as, they have to all be It'd involved. Be all four of them. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, like it won't be like Brent, um, Motley Crue featuring Vince Neil. Right. And four other guys. Now, Chris, pull up that picture of her on the right where she's in the black and white bikini. Right. See, and now I feel like, here, she doesn't have the distracting fake tan, and I think that you can like, yes, you can pay attention that's, to her that's beauty natural. more. You're right. Yeah. That's what the thing is. She yeah. had a bronzer on. Yes. It could be the edit, too. Like, the photographers, they slap on, like, all these filters that make it look 
like they're brown. Even so, like the fake, the fake no, tan. But that here's what's interesting. Vito would never come up with what Vinay <laughs> just fucking nailed in seconds. Good point. Vinay, uh, Vito, what is Why it keeping you, you <laughs> from teaching us about bronzers? I'm teaching you and Vito. editing. That's just I, I don't know anything about photography. Mm, I don't thank think God she, we have Vinay. I here. don't think she looks bronzed by any means. Or that that's looks the one photos. I pulled up that I said I show looks the good bronzing there. picture. Now show this one, like. Come no, on. that's, now that's fucking Jersey Shore bullshit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, some, that's snooky. I, yeah. would, I wouldn't say bronzing. I'd say some lighting on the breasts. You know, no, no, I'm still fine. No. Look at the arms. Look Come at the on. face. Yeah, that's too natural. Looking. That's not Go to the first picture, Chris. That's the one that the first picture. Yeah, you're telling me that's not. That's a yeah. You're telling me that's that natural, doesn't make you know? sense with her hair. I mean, color. as an Italian, you've earned this fucking body. She has it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> her last name is Michaels. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's almost blackface. I'm fine with it. A brown looking white girl, that's that's the dream. That's cheating though. Yeah. I mean I, if you get naturally brown from the sun, you know? Sure. You're risking skin cancer. Sure, everybody likes that. <laughs> but that is, you know, and but no, this is not to take away she's a beautiful woman. Uh, hats off to the people of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Only sell one copy a year now. Hats none on to of, Brett Michaels. <laughs> yeah, none of the None of the sports issues sell at all. <laughs> it's basically a fashion magazine. <laughs> a lot of money in the bikini business. Uh, I used to have friends that did that yeah. years ago. I think there is. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, like uh, Emily Ratajkowski, like, her big thing is just selling bikinis now. Like She's like uh, even modeling less and just pushing her bikini line. He's got all the line. updates yeah. with yeah. her. Okay. What's that? <laughs> he always keeps abreast with Miss uh, Radikowski. Was that a uh, um. okay, wordplay? <laughs> um, yeah, when we saw her in here, it was amazing what a tiny, somewhat, I mean, she was dressed like yeah. in a baggy, looked like a nice, pretty normal girl, but this modeling, she could turn it. I think modeling is like one of the craziest things because people are like, um, you're just born pretty. Right. And then you can use that for a while. <laughs> yes. Now, I'm sure there's skill to it, like that thing where you turn turn your legs around. <laughs> you know? but, um, but the whole thing is, it's almost like hitting the lottery. You know what I mean? Like, you're so pretty, we're going to give you money to be pretty. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Just, we'll fly out to beach. Is there anything else like that? Because, like, even if you're born with a talent right you have to work on that but maybe i'm just being ignorant maybe you have to work on modeling uh i don't know i think it's a little of both i mean i think that there is a skill of knowing like knowing your angles like taking direction and stuff yeah. like that but also it is a gift that was given right. to you by and also, your genes they shoot <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to find a great fucking picture. You know True, I mean? good point. You're going to be doing the fucking twist, and every <laughs> once in a while, like, wait, I just found, we took 5,000 pictures. This is the one we're putting on the cover of Vogue. Now, I have a friend who is a model. I'm going to show you some yeah. pictures of her. But, like, you could see, like, she was just born looking like a model. Like, she just has model face. You know what? But here's the thing. You're right. That isn't con considered traditionally pretty. So what is model face? What is... Why, like, some of those girls look gangly or whatever in real life. Yes, and she's very tall and very thin. I mean, like, you can see, like, her body there. Like, she's very tall, skinny. But I would say that there's, like, a typical model look that's, like, obviously not swimsuit model. Right. And that is, I think the eyes are far apart. I think the forehead is rounded. And I think that there's big, like, big eyes, rounded forehead, and it becomes, like, a very alien yeah, look. Yeah, like, a very, it's, that's what's trendy right now. All right, here's the interesting thing. Do you did you guys watch Gotham ever? Oh uh, yeah. Well, the little uh, Catwoman was just a kid when it started, and she had this almost weirdly adult face, mm -hmm. and her eyes were really far apart. But the updated now that she's a woman thing, it uh, it seems um, now you can see now like I go okay, up. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Now here she is older. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. totally and put like when she first started, Chris. But that's exactly the same type of face as I yeah. just showed you with my friend. It's like a very there's a very wide, right, far Someone, apart eyes. Yeah, 
it's kind of alien looking. Mm-hmm. Right. And Chris, good call because you pulled up Kate Moss and I feel like that was kind of the beginning of that look. There was also a Victoria's Secret model who just, I can't remember her name. She was so popular in the 90s. Like, like light brown, mousy hair and eyes just like on either side of her head and she just looked like a sexy baby deer. That's really funny, the baby deer look. That's exactly what it is because it's just like, oh my God, I could be killed. No, some of them, <laughs> uh, rather, I think instead of baby deers, they might look like baby goats. That's the, <laughs> only, that's the only, but it's a baby mammal Yes. of some type. But I forgot, Kate Moss was the fucking it girl. Kate Moss was ever. She was killing uh, all the fucking magazines. She was dating Johnny Depp. And there would always be like this fucking picture of her just snorting coke somewhere. Yeah. And like she never <laughs> she got didn't hide it much. <laughs> no, no, no. It was never like like Paige Sick was like, she's a coke addict. And then like two weeks later, there would just be another picture of her. <laughs> the cocaine Kate. Coke. I think it was when she was dating the baby shambles guy. Here's the other thing that I like about it. She's chopping her fucking coke. <laughs> she's yeah. not waiting for the line <laughs> to show up. You know, she's in there fucking chopping. She's keeping the conversation going. She wants the next line. Yeah. She doesn't want to slow down. She's like, it's about that time, guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to keep this thing going. All right, you got to pump it up. Yep. I didn't know there was such a thing as Men's Fashion Week. I have a bunch of friends that are models and stylists, oh, and they, yeah. they, they pretended like they were doing so much work. They're like, I am so tired. Yeah, the mic. Mike. Oh, yeah. we're still on. I yeah, thought we yeah, wanted yeah, to break. Yeah, yeah. Ah, no. This was you having a conversation. Oh, I was just uh, talking. I, didn't, I knew that there was Fashion Week, but I'd never heard of Men's Fashion Week. No. It's just New York it's Fashion new. Week, isn't it? Uh, it Is was it? Uh, last week. That was just New York Fashion Week. No, well, it was New York Fashion Week, but they focus on men's. I think, oh, men's is actually, no, you're right. You're actually, Vito's right. Vito's was in July's men's. I think if you're a male fashion model, you got to be ready to look at your watch. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to give you a... Go to... uh, I think it's Aviators um, Gin. They have... uh, What do you call it, Paige? And I'll show you what I think is one of the funniest modeling poses. And... um, it's uh, the guy you call Deadpool. I still call Green Lantern. Look, <laughs> look at the way he will pose with that chin. Like you have to know what you're doing. Like th- as casual as this looks, it's just the opposite. All right, there's more. Like go to their Instagram page because there's another one that's similar to that shot. That is one of the most posy things. And he's just like squinting off into the distance. Yeah, yeah. Pleased with himself. Yeah. The bottle's full. <laughs> Look, every time, too. yeah, every time you see him, he's just caressing the gin. Keep going down. There's one where he's like s- sitting around and there's like crates of gin, and but he's fucking. That's on the website. Hold on, yeah, it's uh, it's this one. Where yeah, he's he's around like a like a bunch of uh, boxes <laughs> full of his gin. Like look, look, <laughs> at, look at his rugged fucking jacket. And look yeah. at kind of playful too. Yeah, I keep uh. That is a nice looking bottle, though, right? Here he is, just in his. Now, as casually as this, look how he ripped the fucking vein up. You know what I mean? <laughs> he had to pull that up. Where's the one with the. It used to be on, like, uh, the uh, on their website. It's fucking hilarious. Like, he's fucking po- uh, packing trucks with his <laughs> yeah. fucking Yeah. Then just took a while, just have a moment to have <laughs> some of his own gin. Might as well get drunk while I'm running this small business. I gotta admit this though, he does make me want to drink gin. <laughs> if you look at the first picture on the on the on the like landing page, yeah, his uh, the one where he's like, oh, here's the. <laughs> that, that fucking perfect. So he's leaning on a couple cases and then just holding it from the fucking top of the bottle. Just casually swig out of his right. ear. Right, looks like, uncomfortable. He shows yeah, that he's got his nuts fucking shoved together there. <laughs> He shows that watch off in every single picture that he does. <laughs> what do you him. think that watch cost him? Uh, I, it's got to be. If you're showing it off like that, I'm going to say thirty grand. He probably More. owns the watch He's company, sp- too. Dude, Sponsored by it. I, uh, I can't give the guy's name out, but a friend of mine has a very nice watch that he bought for himself. Fucking broke. He gets a hold of them to repair his watch. 
a thousand dollars. Fuck that shit. Don't think that I watched some uh, a piece of an, an item like that is not worth a thousand dollars every fucking I don't, I don't pay to fix anything. I fuck it. I'll just throw away a printer or computer. Yeah, but if it's a thousand dollars to fix, what do you think that fucking oh, watch shit. costs? Yeah. You know? So you can't throw away this fucking watch. <laughs> and you can't if you ever want to resell it, you know what I mean? You gotta take care of it. And watches gain in value, right? Depends. Depends, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's like any other collectible. Because you're only watches are jewelry now. They're not to keep time. Yeah. You have a fucking phone. There's no practice. So use. any man wearing a watch is saying this is a bracelet. <laughs> you got your watch on right now? Yeah. You I tried got to hide it. My Nokia smartwatch yeah. I got on Amazon. Oh, so that's connected to your phone? Yeah, but I don't even have Bluetooth on. Oh. This is not even connected. Jesus. It's just I just can base. No, I can't even read it. I just have it. Well, the collectible watches are these old-fashioned kind of gears and all that kind of shit. But and then uh, I think Mayweather was like last month was on his fucking Instagram showing off like twelve million in watches, and everyone was hideous looking, and they're all like fucking covered in diamonds and fucking. Yeah, they're, they're man. The, the last thing you want to do is look, I think, effeminate <laughs> yeah. with your wrist because like clocks are pretty cool. Like gear, the gears inside are fucking amazing. Like that looks, I think that look is like very appealing to look at. What would you, and by the way, I want to get into some, you know, sports thing. Cause I saw that your thing, but I have no idea where Joe Flacco went. So I want to get to <laughs> Exciting. that uh, before we get into dish, but the, uh, the entire watch thing just seems to be like, if you look at any of the pictures, it's very Indiana Jones based. <laughs> Like, we have never got past, uh, and I know Indiana Jones is a sore spot for you, Vinay. You have every right for it. Just the be. second one, the yeah. prequel, that, that Temple one. of Doom. Yeah, that yeah, but that should be enough. <laughs> you know, to even go back and hate the first one. I just saw the glare I got from him when I brought. Oh, but I'm just saying that the the watches themselves. Yeah. yeah, it's like the guy is doing some impression of Indiana Jones. But who? That, with that watch, that guy's going on an adventure of some sort. You know, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. what it's fucking selling. It's not flooded in diamonds, too. There, there was a show on Nat Geo a couple years ago, and it was a Jewish guy from New York, and he was like going around the country, around the world, looking for stuff, and he literally fucking dressed every episode like Indiana Jones, <laughs> <laughs> like the rest of us hadn't seen it. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, like. He had the look that he could pull off an Indiana Jones look. Okay. But you're still going, this fucking guy is a paleontologist or whatever. <laughs> and he dresses like Indiana Jones. See if you can find it, Vito. Chris is not. I, I think I've seen this show. I don't think it lasts. His very... name is like Josh something Steen or something like that. There's not uh, that much fashion options you could do as like an archaeologist, though. No, you're right about that. You can't be wearing Gucci Josh like in Egypt. Not. I can't think of the fucking guy's name, but I got obsessed with his show for a little while <laughs> just because I would sit there and crack up like we don't know. Yeah. And then he would go somewhere and he's like, the Mongols used to, sh you know, do, and then he would try to do. Okay. You're like, you're not even being a paleontologist. <laughs> you're riding on the back of a fucking just sh a saddleless horse trying to shoot something. Reading a Wikipedia fucking page. Yeah. Give us the fossils. I don't know. There was something else, too, that he had gotten caught up in. I think page six was on his dick for a while. I know you guys. I believe in you. All right. So tell me uh, where um, Joe Flacco is now. Joe Flacco will be traded to the Denver Broncos. From As a starter. They said at the beginning, at the end of the season, that uh, the guy they had there now is, was going to start, and they were happy with him. But you have to believe that Flacco will be starting for Denver. You have to. I thought he was going to be a backup. Are they giving him decent money? The details haven't been like they don't know what they're getting from Denver yet, uh, because that comes out March thirteenth when like the the league year begins. But right now, all we know is that uh, is Flacco's definitely going to fucking the Broncos. Wow. Yeah, I figured he would go to like the Jets or something as a as a backup. Yeah, I f I figured that he would try to get behind some young quarterback and fucking you know help him and. You know, keep his knees fucking safe by, yeah. you know, not starting in that leg. Because last year he was all fucked up. He was injured the entire season and then got and then came back, was terrible. And they had this other kid come in and just. Well, he's been around a while, man. Yeah. And a lot of these guys, you know, like even Aaron Rodgers, 
He should have taken the season off. He didn't, and no one ever gives him credit for it. No, no one ever says, "Dude, uh, a hey, uh, Vinny, Vinny, what's up, buddy?" Hey, Ron. Uh, the guy, the show you're looking uh, for is uh, Expedition Unknown. All right, it's on the uh, Travel Channel. Oh, that's, is- <laughs> that's that is not him. There's That's another- not the guy I'm talking about. <laughs> this that? is a second guy who looks like Indiana Jones. First of all, now His I've got to watch Josh Gates' fucking show. <laughs> but I'm thinking a guy that goes back to maybe 2004, 2005, 2006. And it was a very short-lived show. Okay. He had a sidekick named Short Round. <laughs> 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 They were, you know, they were just great together. Is he more or less doing the Indiana Jones than this I other I think kid? my guy did it more. Although wow. I'm shocked <laughs> by how, because my guy had on a leather jacket in places that you shouldn't have a leather jacket. <laughs> was he American or was he like British? No, he was American. British people don't like Indiana Jones. They don't. Why not? I doubt it. You know, the British people are the ones who really emptied out the fucking pyramids, <laughs> not us. Although... Why can you go to New York and see pyramids and mummies and all that shit? I mean, why haven't we give, given that shit back? It's really weird. It's- Could you imagine, like, if we went to Egypt and they're like, oh, yeah, this is Thomas Jefferson's casket. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it belongs over there, man. Come on. I'm, I found a picture of a guy that might be all right, your dude, but is it this guy? Um, let's see. Make that a little bigger. Because, Chris, I think you've got a third guy that looks like Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's not my guy. My guy has what you would call B-movie, 1950s B-movie star looks. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Do you even like the Indiana Jones movies? Never uh, really enjoyed them. Yeah. Never really what? enjoyed the Indiana Jones. Yeah. You can't say that around Eastside Dave. I know. He fucking loses his shit. I, uh, and this was years ago, I got a ticket for me and him to go see Indiana Jones in the big fucking screen uh, at the Paris Theater. And then Karen Allen came out and talked about, you know, the Indiana Jones thing. I was so fucking bored watching this movie. I'm like, I cannot believe how weird. There's almost no dialogue in it. I haven't watched it in a long time. The first one? Yeah, I mean, like, he's fighting on a truck that gets off. He's fighting on an airplane. Wait, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's just going for constant fist fights. It's going to be exhausting for a fucking teacher. Um. Yeah, well, that, that was kind of his, yeah, he was a professor. But that was almost like his Bruce Wayne thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he would get there and not be fucking crazy. Yeah, on the hey, field. Hey, Tommy, what's up? Hey, when I was in uh, in England, I went to a museum. I saw the uh, what they call the Eigen uh, uh, marbles. These, these were uh, uh, statues and the facade from the Acropolis that they had taken in the 1800s. Uh, World Court ordered them to give it back to Greece, and they refused. I mean, the Greeks built a brand new museum, and they still won't give it to them. It's unbelievable. I mean, this is simply not your history yeah you know what i mean uh, people talk about cultural appropriation <laughs> this is literally Deeper. someone else's culture <laughs> and if you thought like i don't like oh they won't like remember like in afghanistan or someplace they were shooting up yeah like, the Buddhist ancient, things. Uh, like, yeah. yeah i think we should step in and say look we'll take them yeah in syria they destroyed all like the old roman architecture it's just ridiculous it's, it's, it's just fucking insane. makes no sense it's fucked yeah. up you know what? Now I'm going the other way. England should keep it all. Well, it's meant to erase culture, right? They just want to like, you know, that's what they want. They don't want this history to be there. Well, the thing is, you have, they, they are taking care of it, but in their own fucking museum where it doesn't really belong. Matt, Atlanta. It's Josh Bernstein digging for the truth. Boom! I think you're 100% right. The deep cut. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah. This guy's fucking into it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's pulling it off, though. Yeah. Now, yeah, he was more of a... All right, I'm sending you into the pretty good prize closet, my friend. Wait. Thank you, sir. Uh, you belong there. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I think he looks like Indiana Gary Goldman. <laughs> <laughs> 
And look at everything that he's doing. Look at and the fifth he, one. He's almost like a fashion model who's pretending to go there and do stuff. The fucking side satchel over yeah. his fucking shoulder is ridiculous looking. You would never have a side satchel? I mean, for, especially for this guy. Like, he's, he's, he's only reason he has it is to complete the look that he's going for. No, Chris. It's to pick up treasures. There's. The, did he ever find treasure? No. <laughs> Obviously not. Chris, it's I thought you were wearing this hat yesterday. That's a oh, character. Oh, That's fuck. a character. He's right. You're fucking Josh Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> That's your character. There's big praise. All right, look at him here. Let's see if we can see this. Is he in a scuba suit? Look. What the <laughs> fuck kind of... <laughs> That's... <laughs> that Darth Vader like I know. It seems like if one of the, like a fucking ninja was underwater. <laughs> oh my god. There he's with a sword. That's the best one. That yeah, has to that's be a good one. one. He's just looking off into He's the looking. Desert. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's Can I tell you something? Yeah. He's also wrestling with his past. Several <laughs> <laughs> things as Bernstein does. Yeah. Well, some stuff happened to him when he was a kid. Oh, there he is smoking a cigar <laughs> and admiring it. He's not just smoking it. Like, look at this cigar, manly, isn't it? He enjoys the finer things in life. Yeah. If he looks at a cigar like that, Lord knows what he's doing when he's polishing that dick. <laughs> and he's dressing like Indiana Jones when he's in New York, too. Yeah. Oh, here suddenly, because he's on a, a fucking ship, he's dressed a little more naval. <laughs> nice little peacoat there. Yeah. Wait, is this him with a chick? All right, she's definitely like uh, Upper East Side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not looking for a model; he's looking for money. Old money too. Yeah, of course, old money. Because that ties into his whole lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Someone who has a tomb of a pharaoh, or someone <laughs> 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 saves some time on the show. Oh fuck! I wish Vito could think of jokes like that. <laughs> Here he is. It looks like a World Explorers Club. That is the Explorers Club oh, in is. New York City. <laughs> there is. That's up near your neighborhood. It's on the West Side. You've ever go never even heard of it. What? All right, see if you can look up the Explorers Club. Neither have I. This goes all the way back to... Um, Wasn't like Teddy Roosevelt in it? Yeah, there's people like that, too. It's the uh, 70th Street, 46 East. So, hmm. is that on this side of the park? No, that's the other side of the park. What's What's the other side? Look at this, just giant elephant tusks there. <laughs> and a picture of woolly mammoths. Yeah. Those tusks are for woolly mammoths. Rhinoceros. He, this is cool as hell. Yeah, it is. I definitely would want to go there and drink that gin <laughs> with that. <laughs> it's off Madison Avenue. I thought I wanted to get into Soho House. This is what I want. Just nothing but taxidermy and separate yeah. animal heads. Yeah. There's a full fucking cheetah. I like how they kind of make this room look like an African tent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into the tent room and finish off this gin, shall we? <laughs> Do you need like a membership? Is it one yeah. of those? Oh. You got to do shit. Like there's astronauts who belong to it and um, the guy who discovered the fucking Titanic. But then like everything else, it's just going to be a bunch of fucking lawyers and advertising guys. Just buy guys who buy themselves. You in. had me excited that it was real explorers. No, there are real explorers. Oh, okay. But, but they so don't fill it out. It's just like the Friars Club, which I would talk about now, but you're going to do a story. When you go to the Friars Club, you might see one comic there, and then all these advertising guys are just fucking getting hammered. <laughs> real drunk. Real estate guys. I mean, this room, the, you can't see the wall because there's so many animal heads. You cannot take a woman into this <laughs> room. She would just start crying. Or any uh, any sort of uh, generate. This generation is a rhino. baby fucking rhino that they killed. <laughs> Not even a fucking adult rhino. <laughs> I killed. Uh, here's my adventure. I killed a three year old rhino. He, he was sucking on his mother's teeth. I came up behind him and blasted him with a bazooka. <laughs> I dated a girl whose dad was so into elephants. Uh, in his, he wrapped her up in elephants. <laughs> <laughs> he had um, tusks. All over his but house. I would say that you're not into elephants. I think if you're into elephants, you would like a living elephant. Yeah, it was fucking weird. He even had a table that was up to my chest, I'd say, that the legs were four elephant tusks. It's messed up. Dude, how did you fucking not marry her? Uh, dude, fuck it. It was a huge house. I fucked that up bad. Yeah, of course you did. what you do? Eat with your hands again? Yeah. How else do you eat pasta? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, I love your elephant dust. What did this guy do for a living when he wasn't shooting rare fucking animals? <laughs> How did he make his money? Uh, Publishing? He, uh, 
He worked in um construction, I believe. Okay. All right. Mobbed up. <laughs> I'm glad you got out of there. You'd be dead by now, Fredo. Looks like Bezos and Elon Musk are part of uh, the Explorers Club. They're in it. Oh, that's fucking... What if they explored? Right, well, yeah, what is Bezos what is yeah. possibly explored? The inside of a warehouse? Come on, Russ. Now you're just being racist. Someone else's wife? See, yeah, go to the Explorers Club and see. All right, there's James Cameron fucking having the time of his life. That makes sense. Did I tell you when we went down? When I made the movie Titanic? <laughs> I was there with Josh Bernstein. <laughs> he had a beautiful satchel. Filled with emeralds. And a knife with an ivory handle on it. <laughs> Seth Meyers? Why is Seth Meyers in it? I don't know. but You, you went the wrong direction. Seth Meyers is not in the Explorer <laughs> Squad. I don't know, be. man. What's he exploring? Humor? <laughs> Late night humor? <laughs> There was a lot of people I know that are telling me, I can't watch the late night shows anymore. They're so hateful. Anybody who's pro-Trump can't doesn't have a late night show for themselves. Yes. There's not one. The most they could hope for is Fallon doesn't bring up anything. That's <laughs> <laughs> your best bet. Because it probably ain't going to happen. I don't think Conan gives a fuck either, does he? No, he doesn't. He rarely brings up uh, politics. I've been watching the 30-minute show. There's not even enough time for him to bring up yeah, but Conan's main topic is himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's himself and going on trips. Yeah. I and mean, when he acts like there's a string in his fucking jacket for 22 he, years. He fucking ditched that thing for the new show. Finally. He's, he's growing. Yeah, I guess. Well, you act like there's something in your pants. <laughs> ba 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 Is there a guy here? I'm going to check. You better do that, Chris. You better fucking check. I'm gonna find out in moments. Now I wanna I wanna watch the other fucking guy that you had. I think his name is Josh Gad. Is that it? <laughs> Different Josh. <laughs> Hold on, Joe is gonna tell me something that's gonna blow over our minds. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, you're speaking about elephants. Um if you look up elephant foot x ray or elephant foot um skeleton it looks like a human foot inside an elephant foot all right i am so fucking ready to be freaked out that what looks, the fuck it's weird now that's a human foot and that's an elephant foot you're looking at the human foot and yelling <laughs> what the fuck this is what you'd never get this looks like nothing like a fucking human foot what, look no, at that the, that's still freaky just put elephant foot and take human out of there look that's not oh, a, like, all right, whatever I was really freaked out for a second. You saw a human foot and then screamed, what the fuck? I, I, I would be shocking on the evolutionary fucking timetable. You put human foot down. <laughs> you put human foot down, Googled it, and then screamed. I had to fucking throw cold water in your face. <laughs> and then you just used the word evolutionary timetable as if that means a goddamn thing. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, the fucking. Uh, I you, don't know the, how you get through life, man. It's, it's a struggle and a miracle every day. Yeah. All right. Why don't we uh, break here? Vinay is back, and I just made uh, Vinay head of the interns, and I'm going to have <laughs> yeah Vito report to him. But that Hear that, Vito? Hey, oh, look. Can you guys just work out the schedule? Could that be yeah. done, Vito? That will be. We will have a confirmed schedule today that nobody will stray from. Are you sure? I swear to God, unless you fuck that up. All right. See, that's he just that's, that's me pointed his finger at an intern and said, unless you fuck that up. And if his head immediately went down, he got sad. He's sensitive. So, hey, you, know, v, you know, Vito has just been bullying me for a long time. You know yeah. what he did to me? What? You know, I ran into him on the, in the park. Yeah. And I had my little dog with me and he just kicked it. His little Pomeranian went flying. See, you never kick a fucking That's animal dog, abuse, man. Huh? Isn't that I wouldn't even up? kick a dog that was biting me. That's how it feels every time he speaks to me. By the way, there's uh, another video that's up that this dog is running this uh, thing, um, like this gauntlet, and this is like maybe the best dog that's ever lived. Uh, I don't know what the name of it is. We can look it up on the iBank, but I got a break here. We're going uh, to come back with a focus on Vito, which... Maybe it could be a thing that uh, Vinay takes over if you don't nail this today. I don't want to put pressure on you. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. But you've had this long enough, Vito, that you should be like 
great at it. The way you are with the opening. You're amazing at the opening. Thank you. Until you did it in front of a crowd. And then you just started running back and forth on the stage like a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. And then you still hurt by that? I, I, it was my fault. I should have went over it with everybody. Let me tell you something. I went up last night at the cellar and had the wrong tone. And it took me like four minutes to get out of it. Do you ever do that, Vinay? Where yeah. you're just like, this is not the way I wanted to be speaking. Yeah. But I was so exhausted because I did our show yesterday. Went out to dinner with you guys. Went and did Bobby Kelly's uh, show upstairs with uh, Jim Florentine. It was like so much fun. But then I got on stage like 12, 15 at night. Jesus. And I just, instead of being myself, I was a little more depressed. When <laughs> I was just talking about weather. I'm like, oh, fuck, these people don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could come right in now. and do it with you guys and you would trust me. But they were yeah. just like, oh, I hope this guy's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to work my way out of it. But. That's to me. It's always tone. I don't care what anybody says. You know what I mean. You have to have the right tone before anything else. And that's why I say when you're arguing with him, when you come in redlining at a ten, there's no way to go, dude. You got to build anger. Hey, Vinay. Yeah. We're gonna work on everything together. Oh God, I didn't mean be boring. Or facetious. Stop yeah. whispering to him. Yeah, I, I it sounded like you just got done having sex and you were <laughs> just letting him know that you're going to spend your life together. Name, right, we got a break you. here, Vito. I can't fucking coach okay. you, okay? Sorry. This isn't fucking minor league fucking baseball. I'm not done a single A trying to fucking tell a guy who's, quite frankly, too old to ever get to the fucking pros <laughs> how to fucking hold a bat. It's like Tebow. Betting to Let's ditch. Put on your headphones, Vito's got the news. Let's dish to the gossip they're saying on the radio. This week's dish segment is presented by Dish. Tuned into you. To learn more, call 1 844 call Dish or go to dish.com. And today's guest on Dish is the return of Kashmir. Yeah. Hello, hello, hi! Woo. And, uh, you can see Jersey Poor next Wednesday, February 20th at 8 p.m. at the Branded Saloon in Brooklyn. And he his new podcast, Not Another True Crime Podcast from Ooh. Betches Media, oh. launches March 1st. Ooh. Oh, I am I looking forward to that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I know. Excited for that, getting into some now, murders and stuff. What, you lo- you're one of those people that loves the the murders. Murderino? Murderino, yes. Yeah. I mean, it mainly started from like SVU with Mershka Hargitay, and then it yeah. kind of just grew from there. Uh, it's There's a lot of people who love it, and I've seen Dateline, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure the husband did it. <laughs> Usually, I'm fucking, yeah. I mean, I think he would even even tell something to his girlfriend, his side piece. Yeah. Like, I'm going to kill her. That's usually if, like, who killed the wife, and it's usually who took the kids. It's just yeah. like, so let's check out dad first. Yeah. It's only dad. It's like, just like a snap. Now, series. by the way, it's never enough money, not just to get a divorce. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I need that extra $175,000, which comes down to about a fucking ten dollars a year for every year i'm gonna be in jail for right know? yeah like seriously if you're going to do time the money should be so fucking outrageous right you know it's not like oh i want to get the van <laughs> <laughs> and am i the only one um disappointed that cashmere is not in a robe i mean i, I know, was I, usually, I know yeah. they're all in the wash right now <laughs> Dude, i was so fu- i've always had a dream of going on stage in a robe and you do it and it's- then for some reason, laid down. <laughs> I love to see the two of you do a show together, yes. both in robes. It's, it's very... not another robe show. <laughs> <laughs> Robed out. Oh, it is very freeing to do it. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, me, I don't know for anybody else. But no, I, <laughs> I, I come home, I'm right in a robe. Oh, I don't constantly. live without it. Yeah. That's why I'm always late yeah. anywhere in the morning because I'm just usually in a robe drinking coffee in the morning. It's yeah. So good. I'm not in my outside clothes inside for more than 30 seconds. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Tops. I'll be walking down the hall in my apartment building taking my pants off. (laughs) (laughs) I veto, I know that because the three of us get along so well, you feel like you can't get the dish. You're still part of this. You can wear a robe. Yeah, you want to wear a giant robe? (laughs) I I have a robe at home. (laughs) What kind of robe? It's a blue robe. It's a 
plush. It was a gift. Plush. It says Big V on it. Nobody's ever called me Big V. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Big V. Big V. Neither you or Vinay. I don't know which one. One of you guys is Big V. It's like a mob wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a mob wife. All right, let's get this started. All right, first dish. Former Sirius XM executive Tim Sabian was at the Friars Club and got into a fist fight with Friars Club VP uh, Brian Chere. Brian Chere was trying to give Tim a buy Tim a drink. Tim said no a few times, kept saying no, and after the third time, onlookers say Tim Sabian punched him in the mouth, and then people had to tear them apart while onlookers cheered for who they liked more. Um, <laughs> well, I will say this. No one ever likes management of that place. It's uh -huh. always, uh, everyone's always upset with them. And I've been to the Friars Club many times with Tim Sabian. And the drunkenness that goes on. <laughs> <laughs> and there's very little talk of comedy. Um, I think Jerry Stiller was the biggest star I've ever seen. Having, <laughs> but it's a it's a private club, and you you have to buy so much food every. Uh, there's like a minimum. A, yeah, there's a minimum that you're you, you're paying, and you if you don't order the food, but um, so we would go with Tim. And then he, Tim was like, look, I want you guys to come and uh, we're going to talk about what we're going to do with the show. And me and, back then, me and Fez would go with him. You have went, right? I Fez? went once, yeah. And we would go to have a meeting with our VP and we would come up and it would be a giant table and he had invited 18 other people. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Chris is a drinker. Right. These people were 10 times drunker yeah. than Chris Whoa. Stan. It was fucking nuts. Yeah. Just the pounding one yeah. cocktail after another or just like straight fucking whiskey or Ooh. scotch. Or wow, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, it was all just fucking straight. So there's and, no talking in your but, meeting yeah. then? No, 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 no. Yeah. It fucking came into, you understand how fucking funny this man is? <laughs> yeah, and they would all be like, you, here's my you. card, let's get the, they're just looking for these things. Oh. They were like, Real estate guys, advertising right. guys, huh. lawyers. And there's a ton of people at the table, but also the amount of people that would come up to the table. Yeah, people would come over Just to the table. It's a very social, uh. fucked up place. But <laughs> Fez hated it because he used to call it spiky, spicy steaks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it was real old school fucking dining, right. you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and very few women. Very few I was women. wondering that. But a beautiful old building. It's a fucking yeah. old building. You know, townhouse, you could take fucking steams on the third floor, but it's like Ooh, nice. taking a steam in, in the ruins. <laughs> <laughs> now, considering he it's was buying him a drink, yeah. I'm guessing they were trying to squash a beef or something like no, that. No one knows. Uh, are they just trying to hit his card minimum? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, sent this out to Michelle with 1L and, and, and Wiki and everybody yeah. who worked with Tim here. And Tim, by the way, was with Stern Show for... A long time, and then with Stern's um, PD of the Philly station before that. So, you know, he said, you can see him and the other guy. This is like, you were 35, 40 years out of where any fight would make sense. <laughs> I mean, this is on the border of two old men hitting each other in Miami Beach. It's just really embarrassing. But uh, I'm, I have an insider on this story uh, who says Tim knocked him out which is not Ooh, what the paper says. No. So that might be the story that's being told after <laughs> the fact. And I'm not going to say who it is. I'll just say it's a Jay Gurian. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anonymous. Yeah, anonymous. Yeah. I can't, I'm very good, though. If Mueller calls me in, I fucking give him nothing. All right, Vito. So uh, George Zimmerman has been kicked off of the dating app Bumble, which I find funny. Are killing too many people. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's yeah. Killing an innocent child was that the reason? Those damn guidelines, or yeah. just undateable? He just was, simply undateable. He was already kicked off once before. Tried to join back up, but now he's back off. He's got kicked off again. I just feel like let him have a profile. Nobody's gonna swipe yes on him. Like just let it go away on its own. 
I, I think he could get set up, as a matter of fact. If I was him, oh, yeah, I'd, that's, I'd oh, be yeah. worried. You know? Maybe that's why they're doing it, to they're protect just him. To protect him? Yeah. The foster <laughs> sisters are helping him out. Well, he, yeah, he's going to protect his the, the Bumble Corporation. <laughs> right. Yeah. They don't want to say, like, uh, someone was jumped or murdered <laughs> because of Bumble. I but, just love the image of him being so sad, like in his twin bed, <laughs> retyping a different email into Bumble, <laughs> trying to make it work. I was like, damn it! <laughs> he only swipes on people with hoodies. <laughs> Oh. That's that's no. I'm looking at this picture. It's just him standing over a grave. It's no, horrible. no, guys, too soon. <laughs> Still too soon. <laughs> no, he can't get on that one for celebrities. Right. <laughs> By the way, Honestly, you should try. <laughs> if you would have told me that this dish segment was going to start off with Tim Stavian and George Zimmerman, <laughs> I would have thought I had a fucking high fever. <laughs> They're so hot right now. <laughs> it's New York Fashion Week. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, Katy Perry is uh, in trouble for some shoes she put up under the Katy Perry collection. Um, people are upset because they resemble blackface. Now, it's a black shoe. This is kind of like the, what was it, a Gucci? The Gucci, the yeah. Sweater, yeah. The black. This is a black foot. <laughs> um... I just don't get why she do this because, like Gail just said, yeah. not three months ago, Gucci got uh, in trouble. Can I just say this though? She also has a white shoe, the same way that yeah. we're not seeing here. So, like, there it is, right there. This is just shoes with faces on it, and she has a a, a white one. Right? Or do you think that's more flesh colored? I like, would say what they used to say that's now yes. inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, Remember I think flesh? if they were. Crayons. <laughs> I think that if that were a pure white one, you'd have a better case. But one looks skin tone, and the and other one, one is pure black. Yeah. yeah, it looks like that was some intention. Um, <laughs> but both of them have blue eyes, so That's there true. you go. That's think nice. about that. That's unity. <laughs> one looks like forward. kind of gimp eyed too, like a lazy eye. <laughs> That's just the shoe design, Chris. <laughs> I just think. Yes, By the way, we don't use the term gimp. <laughs> oh. These days. <laughs> that Crayola color is also discontinued. Yeah. <laughs> Everything <done>. thus far <laughs> has been not very 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, after Gucci gets just, in trouble, just, yeah. just avoid just red lips it. and, also, and black. Why does she have to make shoes? Like, just don't touch She's got enough don't money. Yeah. 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 Good Come point. up with a fucking song. That's right. your fucking gig. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but Paul McCartney never got in trouble for his bad shoes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got in trouble for starting wings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dino Lohan has been getting what people think is catfished for five years now. So while in Celebrity, uh, the Celebrity Big Brother house, she's talking with the other house guests, and she's talking about how this boyfriend she's had for five years, who she's only talked to on the phone, has never video chatted, has never seen, but she says, trust me, he's real. I've talked to his mom before. <laughs> Oh yeah, what a sad that's, sentence. That's, yeah, yeah but <laughs> here's the thing. Obviously, this is what she's comfortable with. She's not looking for uh, a relationship or a man. She's looking for a fantasy, and she gets it from this guy. But it's dangerous. Like just like it's dangerous for George Zimmerman in to be on years, Bumble. No, in five years she hasn't seen she, the guy. People lie online, and some people like it. But she could be sending him money, and she could be. Well, we don't know that. I don't she's think she an has adult. a time. Yeah. That, well, that's what happened. Most of these cat look, I watch as an ex, I watch catfish, so I know what's going uh, on. He's like, I've been and catfish that's three times. You show up. Yeah. Catfish was they, faker than saying a catfish is. Yeah, fake. they set them up. They they actually, the catfish reaches out and they know there's an answer. It's a pretty, like, it's a stupid fucking show because it's all. It's the, yeah. It's, it's like all reality TV, it's not real. But here's the thing, Dina Lohan, I've known that name forever. I thought that she was like a tough momager type thing. But I saw her on that show, and she's a very naive, almost yeah. girl woman. She's, she is, seems yeah. Sweet, like somebody that needs to be taken care of. I thought so too, but I think it was the low hand dad that was the true yeah. villain. Yeah. Michael, Lohan. He but was I awful. think yeah. Dina was doing all the. But that she was supposed to be like the manager, exactly. Yeah. And he was like coming in, going, "Give me some of that manager. <laughs> 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 Give me her college fund." But yes, yeah, she does come off that way, and all the time she's very strange because the way she carries herself is exactly like. A teenage girl, like yeah. she seems like a sweet teenage girl. Yeah, that, like, doesn't, really, yeah. doesn't right? really know what's going on. Was she Rockette? 
I don't. What, is, what does that know. question even mean? I think she, say I that. remember when. Then that's your job to know the facts. When yeah, why first, would I know that? I, I thought somebody would know. When Lindsay Lohan first popped you, off. I don't know one <laughs> rockette. Yeah. You might know one I today. I've met Lohan them before. That what do you mean when daughter. Lindsay Lohan first popped off? You want me to remember this from the Parent Trap days? <laughs> oh, I was talking about Mean Girls era. <laughs> no, Parent Trap is where she kicked it. I remember seeing it was like E! Television. And who played the mom in Parent Trap? It was like a uh, star. Liam Neeson's uh, deceased I wife. Meredith Blake. No, right, so this is another one. This was her with the girl from Halloween, the lady from Halloween. Oh, mm. Freaky Friday. Oh, free- oh. Yeah. She so, only remade old shows, yeah. <laughs> old movies. So what's her name? Uh, Tony Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. All right, so there's Jamie Lee Curtis. She's Hollywood royalty, right? So they stop them on the, like a red carpet or whatever they do at E. And this little girl just takes over and is talking the entire time. And Jamie Lee Curtis is just standing there. And I'm like, I don't know who this kid is, but the confidence level is through the fucking roof. You know what I mean? And, and you know, whatever that thing was, it drove her through all of her, you know, childhood movies. I think it was only, was Mean Girls the last kind of time people liked her? Yeah, it was yeah. like she did. It was Mean Girls and like Confessions of a Teenage, teenage drama, drama Queen, Queen around the same time. And then yeah, like Tina Fey kept trying to help her and would bring her back to SNL every now and then yeah. and give her like a walk on. <laughs> but hey, I watch Lohan's Beach Club. She's doing things. And, yeah, you know, man. Yeah. She's a worker. Have you seen the rumors that she's um, prostituting those yeah. girls out? Um, and she's prostituting like the men and the every because every show it's just based on like this random DJ comes in and then she's like, you have to be theirs. And they just make out with the DJ in like a cabana for the oh, day. Oh, so it's not accusation. It's no, like, it's it's like actively now. happening. <laughs> <laughs> On the show. And she's just like, that's your job. It's she's like, Lindsay Lohan's client. whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know On what? MTV. <laughs> I haven't seen a second of this show, but I'm in now. Yeah, Beach Brothel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay <laughs> Lohan is a madam. And <laughs> <laughs> I love a pivot. But, yeah. but in a foreign country, I mean, it's pretty fucking crazy exotic what she's doing you know right yeah i'm not doing this in fucking malibu <laughs> you know <laughs> and do they all know her as a star is that yeah that's like the draw. There? yeah that's the draw and it's like it's called it's called Lindsay lohan's beach, beach club, club right? yeah and it's like never it's always like half full too even if it's prime there's like yeah not a lot of people in it it's but amazing. where is it dubai or something uh, mykonos all right, so I nice said yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, she's literally just like <laughs> eating hummus the entire time in, with an accent. I'm like, this is so bad in so oh. many ways. And then she like a video. I saw of her that with... thing where she thought she was rescued. Oh. oh yeah, that was insane. Which you like, don't fuck with Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking like Jesus that? This is insane. <laughs> yeah, she's showing her range for Hollywood. She's ready. <laughs> I just think of poor Dina watching that, oh. going, "Oh, I don't know what to do." You know, oh. I saw Ali Lohan recently. Her younger. So start, and she looked yeah. amazing. Really? Yeah. It's good for her. That's all she has gone for her, but good for her. <laughs> uh, how much younger is she? I think she's like 26 or so. Right, let's get an Allie Lohan up there, Chris. Because she was the star of Living Lohan with Dina. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, see, I never saw that either. <laughs> it's Maybe. <laughs> she made a record with the Maloof brothers in Vegas. <laughs> the weird thing is she kind of reminds me of Jessica Simpson's little sister. Actually, yeah, who's also looking amazing. Yeah, but she shaped her face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even recognize her from her. <laughs> yeah. um, that Ross money really yeah. helps out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but great, great pop record that oh. she put out. You make me wanna la la. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> okay, that one. I, that be your first <laughs> it is. It truly is. <laughs> There's also a, a line in there that is like, "I'll be your alley cat," and it took me a long time. I thought she was saying, "I'll be your alligator." And I was like, "Why is that alligator drinking milk?" And I get it. <laughs> well, she had that, I think, the most amazing moment in the history of Best SNL. Oh, yeah. Where she just completely stood there. <laughs> you mean this one? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I'd do a hoedown. Like, she does a hoedown dance to just cover up how uncomfortable the whole I'm thing was. Day. <laughs> now, Jessica Simpson is so huge right now, and then she put out a picture today that she broke the toilet seat. <laughs> oh, my God. In her ninth. That's I mean, at, her at four months of pregnancy is bigger than most people at nine months yeah she she carries it uh yeah yeah so i'm <laughs> pretty heavy she is with a broken toilet <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rough yeah but but how cute though a little chub yeah. on her cheeks I know she's glowing. She's yeah with the bandana she's, yeah. yeah she's unbelievably one of the most beautiful people ever oh, cool pants <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> love her pregnancy love her. yeah yeah 
But it seems like she stays pregnant more than most people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like 18, 19 months. I, I didn't know she was pregnant again from the last time. <laughs> that is crazy, though. Like, people who have kids, like, rapid succession. Yeah. back, They do... Then you start to think of it, you're like, okay, so I've pretty much been pregnant for 10 years. Ugh. Like, yeah. 10 years of my life I've been pregnant. Wow, look that at that uh, swollen <laughs> foot. I mean, that's... Hold on, Lewis is giving us a spy report. Spy Sp report. Spy report. Well, with some kind of... Spy report. Spy report. All right, that's too much. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, guys? I got us. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I got a spy report to Vito's story about uh, Lindsay Lohan's mom and that five-year guy. Yeah. Uh, the catfish guy already found him, and he's posted his picture up on Twitter, and he says he knows the guy, and there's even more to the story than what Lindsay Lohan's mom's is saying. Uh, first of all, let me say he looks perfect for her. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Now, is he a good guy, or is this some kind of a weird thing? Oh, he, he won't say. I guess they're saving it for the show. He just says there's more to the story. More than the story, mm. like what? He has a vagina? Nah, he, we don't know. <laughs> Everybody's been waiting. Is What's he going to be the video from home? <laughs> maybe they're getting married. Ooh. Oh. Maybe. Now, why would Lindsay say, send me a, I'm dying to say, send me a picture? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. The only thing she said is, uh, mom, stop with this creepy catfish thing. Um, hey, uh, Louis, uh -huh. I've never said this to you before, but pretty good prize. Yeah! Party. I dreamt that this happened two other times. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a good one. Yeah, he's a longtime caller. Yeah. I consider him a friend. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a catfish friend. I <laughs> really don't know what really goes on in his life. <laughs> uh, Jenna Jameson actually just lost 80 pounds off of her keto diet. Now, she put up a picture like before and after, and she got really big, and she slimmed down quite a bit. Man, 80 pounds. Damn. Whoa. That's like, wow. Yeah. I actually prefer her before. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she does the keto thing, which it, it consists of like uh, the intermittent fasting where you only eat certain hours a day. So she only eats from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I don't get that because some of my friends do it and they eat like ch cheese and bacon all the time. Like they were like, they'll get a Caesar salad. Yeah. And it'll just be with like ranch dressing and like bacon bits on it. They're like, this is I'm my in. diet. And I'm, yeah, that's what I'm like, yeah. But how does it work? You can eat like a lot of people eat whatever the fuck they want just yeah. in that few times. But she cut out like dairy and bread. But does it bread. matter what time could you pick from seven at night to three in the morning? Or does it have to be 11 to six? I think it all depends on your sleep schedule. So. It's I don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, Jenna, help me out. <laughs> so, I mean, but th that would make you eat more during that time. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to be able to eat again for a while. Yeah. I, I can't handle hunger at all. If I fucking get home and I'm hungry, <laughs> yeah. if I get home and I'm hungry, no. oh, you <laughs> this might shock you guys. I have a fucking problem with food. <laughs> He's in that big V row munching away. <laughs> Munchhausen syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ariana Grande oh, is in no. trouble for cultural appropriation because oh, of her song. Pete Davidson's song? <laughs> no, no, that's nothing to do with Pete Davidson. It's about her song Seven Rings. Okay. Uh, people are mad that her flow resembles uh, Soldier Boy's style of flow, saying that the music video completely rips off Two Chains' mm. trap house element. And how could yeah. anybody in the world of hip hop? Accuse anyone else <laughs> of fucking that's, stealing. That's what her writer said. Her that writer said this, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> you helped write that yeah. song. <laughs> but this seems more like picking on the little white girl than anything else. Yeah. And, and if, if you listen to her song, it's just a fucking pop song with some yeah. rap in it. Like, it's not culture. Yeah. Pink did this a few years ago. Oh, nobody the, was yelling That out. first album, she, yeah. Or, no, like a revenge with Eminem. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. But nobody said no cultural matter. appropriation. Yeah. It just said, oh, she tried to rap. And also, it's a thing. All of the writers on the song, besides Ariana Grande, are singers and like writers of color. Look, if, you, so they, yeah. if you come at the situation like, oh, here's a song that Ariana Grande ripped off, okay, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. to, but to say, like, she's not entitled to do what kind of style music, fuck off, yeah, that's and silly. Like, why do we have Post Malone? <laughs> Literally, it's yeah. just... Right. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. But first of all, uh, cultural appropriation is the whole point of the United States. <laughs> we should, we're about being a melting pot. Yes. You know what I mean? Tex-Mex. Fusion. <laughs> yeah. That's the name not, of her album. Yeah. <laughs> it's not wrong... To say, oh, I enjoy that thing and I'll bring it into my culture, it is a good thing. 
I know? I agree 100. percent I grew up I grew up mostly around uh, like black kids my whole life. I was the only white kid in my school. I grew up loving hip hop. I love that culture. And like I've never once been called told I was culturally appropriating. And if I was, I'm a product of my element of what I grew up in. I, but also even beyond this, suppose you're not. Suppose you're yeah. some Jewish kid living in the suburbs and you hear hip hop and you love it. Right. And also, it means that's something to you. And this yeah. is a great thing for I feel like so many artists who uh, like do songs like this because now they have someone who's the definition of mainstream yeah. bringing this type of music to light to people who are like wouldn't look it up anyway. And a girl who tried to rip her off this rapper Princess Nokia was like, this is my song. And someone's like, no, you ripped off that song. And then she deleted exactly. everything she posted about Oh, Princess really, Nokia was after. Yeah. yeah. I really like Princess mm-hmm. Nokia, though. But I mean, just throwing it out yeah. there. My favorite you, type of phone. If you <laughs> listen to the Beach Boys, there's plenty of Chuck Berry riffs in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Chuck Berry wasn't screaming because I'm not even sure if he fucking yeah. invented that riff. Right. Bo Diddley did not invent the Bo Diddley fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. famous <laughs> riff. Right. But let's go to a guy who should know. Yeah. Earl? Yes. Cultural appropriation. In this case, absolutely not. Is there some cases that have bothered you? Yeah, give give a good example. Cases so that we can have understand. bothered me. Yeah. Um, Paul well, Simon. Yes, Paul really? Simon. Um, I like that with record. Graceland because he, there he, were parts of Graceland he just flat out ripped off. No, he brought those people in, and they brought in their licks. And isn't that look, a collaboration? Yes, that is a there was, I, I can't remember which songs, but there was a straight D- lift. Okay, of but the like song. like diamonds on the soles of her shoes when they do like the opening. Yeah, but like, yeah, but bringing it, but bringing in like Lady Smith, Black Mombazo, and yes. Hugh Masekela, that's fine. I think those two those combinations work. But when you're directly just <laughs> lifting stuff but and putting gonna, stamping your own name on it, then that's what, when it's them sue him. The, the, the whole thing of culture you're saying you stole it from a certain person right then yes that's that was a lawsuit, my point. but if you sound like if i suddenly write a song that sounds like a country song people that actually live in the country can't get furious yeah. right it's not theirs you know and all these things look girl i don't get mad at you for wearing pants <laughs> You know what I mean? That's culturally appropriate for my Western European (laughs) problems. So, actually, Pete Davidson just covered up his Ariana Grande tattoo on the back of his neck. No, why? Just embrace it. Yeah, right. And he wrote, curse. She's in right now. Oh. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, that's you, know what? you had her, dude. That's a good thing. Yeah. Now you're with another beautiful fucking. <laughs> oh, my, what is that? Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. even know if he moved up or if it's a lateral move. I, I can't tell. I say he moved up. Yeah. Well, but, I like that he has the oh Tootsie cool. Pop owl. That's I mean, that's cool. pretty cool. Yeah. That's How happy. Many licks this <laughs> <laughs> One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. I like that he's being smart with his tattoos, as you can see he's planning for more yeah, additions right? to the yeah. lower right. It's very like, much like a, <laughs> it's a vision board. Like yeah. he's <laughs> <eating. laughs> oh gosh. Um I mean that she kinda I feel like won that in so many ways because she just released her album all about the breakup with that, and it's like everyone's saying it's her best album yet, and it's already breaking. Yeah, but he's records. he's like dating Kate Beckinsale now, so yeah. I don't know who won. Well, the person it, with an album. But I feel like she's, <laughs> yeah, <the first laughs> she's back in renting him because yeah. I feel like in two months she's gonna drop him. Well, and then uh, somebody that knows everybody in that told me like they're both just enjoying this weird <laughs> yeah. thing. You know, <laughs> right. Kate is like this isn't the first young dude. No, she was with somebody younger than Pete before this. Right, she's forty seven. Mm. But to me, she's, she's always gorgeous. been one of the most stunning women. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah she's so beautiful. Stunning. Go ahead, Vito. You don't want to. So no, A um, and E is uh, the Scientology show with Leah Remini that you love. Uh, I love that show. Uh, they are burying an episode about Danny Masterson. So Danny Masterson had some uh, sexual assault accusations. Leah Remini did a whole episode investigating the LAPD and how there might have been a cover up with Scientology paying off the LAPD or convincing them to drop it. Right. And he said they'd air the episode in February. February's come, and now they're saying we never, ever said an air date, even though the acu- uh, the victims were told the episode would air. Now, are they now saying that they won't run it, or it just hasn't run it? They just keep saying there's no definite air date for it. Yeah, they might not have their legal thing. And right, they're out. trying to figure Wait, out what they can do. As much as we all love Leah Remedy, she does, she's not somebody who understands <laughs> and fucking you know uh, Scientology is lawyered up yeah lawyered up I mean if they had enough to fucking juice the LAPD for Danny Masterson well you just turn around and say that I mean you're fucking 
you're in a position right now, and I just say you don't speak for us or the company. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Elizabeth Moss, do you hear that? He's talking on his own. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when she came in here, Elizabeth Moss? Yeah. She wanted to smoke. She wanted to smoke so bad. I love that. <laughs> oh, She's great. I really yeah. love her. She's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill Cosby in prison and loving it. <laughs> he's loving it. <laughs> he's loving it. So he's another TLC. He told show. his like representative said Bill is having a great time in prison. He's talking to other inmates. He's encouraging them. And uh, his wife was always trying to get him to stop drinking coffee. He's giving up coffee and he's giving up bread and he's losing weight and he's just. I love that this story prison. is just George Bluth while he's in jail. Yeah. <laughs> he's coming up with caged wisdom. <laughs> he's eating ice cream sandwiches and just loving the whole experience. <laughs> yeah, I think your lawyer always says either you're in your life is in danger or you're doing great. They don't say either way. Yeah. Yeah. Best role yet. I just yeah. like that all these other inmates are going up to him for advice. And well, Why wouldn't he? He's an 81-year-old yeah. fucking billionaire or near billionaire. There. They probably want some of that fucking. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Don't forget, I treated you well in here. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bella Thorne, uh, she came up on Dish a few weeks ago for oh, her no. thruple. She has this crazy ass house in Sherman Oaks that she's now offering guided tours of for $50. <laughs> give her 50 just to hang out with her. Yeah, why not? Fifty dollars for guided tour. She's even rented it out for studio sessions. She owns it with her sister, and it's called the Trippy Twins Fun House. <laughs> In the backyard? That's like looks like in the uh, inside. That's there. Says, Hello, oh, human. I was making a joke like it was a tree house. <laughs> <laughs> a tree house. <laughs> thanks for the correction. She does it all because she so raps. She what said, is she going to yeah. talk about when she's giving you the tour? <laughs> like, see this room? It's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's trippy. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Um, yeah. Just, I don't even know why I did this. But... <laughs> Do we get a lunch with this? <laughs> uh, the Oscars are next Sunday, and uh, Ooh, the. Wow. By the way, a bunch of things just won on demand. Yes, oh, yeah. The Queen movie on demand. Are uh, you going to I demand it or not? Yeah, <laughs> I am just to go through it, but I saw the fucking trailer and was bored. Mm. See, I don't know. Mm. I really don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. It just doesn't seem like I'm gonna dig it. I'm so the Oscars this year. Movies. No, I mean the Queen movie. Uh, yes, so yes. There's, yes. And there's two of them that I'm just like I don't have the energy for either of them. Which the favorite? You talking about the favorite? There's the favorite, which is the big one. And there's I Mary Queen it. of Scots, yeah. which is like I don't. What's happening? I didn't think that, I thought that one looked bad. Mary Queen of Scots. So it was the favorite. I, like, I liked it a lot. Mary definitely. Queen of Scots. <laughs> but it's like a downtown app or <laughs> downtown yes. happy. Yeah. Every year one like, of these comes out, where it's two hours and they just take off. A glove and then everyone gasps and yeah. there's another hour left of just like a horse. Like I don't have yeah. the energy for that. <laughs> I don't know if the butler glanced at somebody or what happened. Now, um, what do you guys make of uh you know them saying that they're not going to give the award for editor um, best they're editor. going to give it, they're gonna give it out during the commercials. But I mean they're gonna do it during the commercials. Do you think I don't give a fuck? I, don't I mean, like I don't it. care. I, I'm more upset that the movies stink, not that the TV <laughs> show stinks. I they have already taken away everything that they had that had to do with art as soon as you just have 10 best pictures it's done but i mean i feel like best uh you know editing is that's a slap in the face i mean that's on par with S taking cinema cinema cinematography cinema cinema yeah. it's off cinematography is off, off too. too that's disgusting they're both at. yeah that's yeah. that's gross. and those are the ones that actually it's like less of a, like a celebrity is getting it or something right. like that it's like those are people that are putting in a lot of work not just for Attention a million it's, just because this is right. what they're it's, good yeah. at. They it's something do. you watch a movie and you actually yeah. think, oh, this could win Best Cinematography. Wait, wait, wait. But they will take a selfie with a lot of stars and have pizza delivered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, it, this is a TV show. It's not yeah. the Film Academy anymore. And again, I'm more upset the film stinks. Mm -hmm. I'm more upset that there's not one fucking film this year to discuss that we probably discussed Russian Doll. Yeah, more we have more than uh, fucking yeah. any so film bad. that came out. Like it, yeah. and the the, okay. the Queen film is hysterical. It's just sucking gayness out of <laughs> this yeah. thing for a guy who was living at a time. And I mean, when you see pictures of him, to not say that you were gay lets you know what a fucking dangerous time it right, was yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to be gay, and to have that not be the story. To have it, hey, we all made the music. <laughs> 
Come on, dude. <laughs> You're fucking still out there fucking, you know, running that same stuff. There's nothing new. So uh, I don't give a shit about it. But what I do like is Brian Singer, they got rid of three weeks into it for the same accusations of before they hired him. You know how much money he took out of that movie? Forty million dollars. Oh, what? Forty million dollars. I read like set stories. He was like fucking not showing up. Yeah. He was a terror on the set. Rami Malek yeah. set. Uh, he. How do you get fucking forty million dollars for not showing up to work? <laughs> the same way you get a job from after assaulting kids. It just. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. Exactly. His next movie just got delayed now. Um, yeah. Red Sonia. But like you said, it doesn't make sense to take everything away from him now when you could have done this years like. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, he's sitting at home right now with a solid gold fucking hot tub. <laughs> yeah. This business sucks. <laughs> <laughs> they take and they take and they take. <laughs> Is there, can I get some more gold in this hot tub? <laughs> yeah, the Oscar movies this year are weird. Most of them, like, got trashed in reviews. Of course. Um, give me the, just give me the best pictures, because now I'm forgetting everything. Yeah, well, it's going to be the one that none of us yeah. have watched. Green it's Book? been on Netflix. Is that Roma? Roma. Yeah. And no one yeah. watched it. And the only people, uh, Tommy Rhodes saw it, and he fucking said, don't watch it. Because that's like <laughs> such a long one for Netflix, too. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh. Uh, then Green Book, and then... Uh, oh, Stars he Born with <laughs> right. Bradley Cooper's <laughs> Give My Voice in the Stars Born. <laughs> <laughs> when we got together it? with Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she was on one at the Grammys, too. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so she, I was surprised nobody brought up that she kind of did, Lady Gaga kind of did a black voice when she was next to everybody oh, in the beginning of the show. In the beginning of the show, she's next to Jada Pickett Smith, uh, Michelle, uh, Obama. Michelle Obama, uh, and Alicia Keys, and uh, uh, J-Lo. There's Bradley Cooper out there. <laughs> <world. laughs> Give it to me, girl. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Bradley Cooper is a reward. <laughs> what is he doing in that fucking movie? What I don't know. Do? Gaga's performance doing that song was uh, otherworldly. Was was like, yeah. I was, was pissed. I it like, was so weird, man. I like her voice, and I like. I don't even like. I didn't. That's not even the song I like from the movie. But I just wanted to see her just sing a song. Well, that's why. I was why interested. act like yeah. this is new though? This yeah. is what she's always done. She's done stripped down performances before, and I always liked. Like I first started liking her. Well, when I first. <laughs> <laughs> she did S Rose. She did SNL years ago. She sat in a weird outfit, but she just played piano. Yeah. She did poker face and song about New York, and I fucking love that. And now she just you're too fucking clung in to this. That one you're moment, thinking about it more than she does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, because she's doing so much. Because I feel like because she's doing her residency in Vegas during yeah. all this, she doesn't have the time to do like some indifference. She's like, you know what? I'll just be a little cuckoo. She when she share. started doing yeah. the like acting out, the drinking the and the coke, the yeah, I was like, yeah, that was like, <laughs> that was very uncool. It was like something like a dare teacher yeah. would do. You're like, don't do that. When I decided to have Dice Clay play her song. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, there's the moment right oh, there. Yeah. Go back, go back, Chris. Cool. It's just the lamest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not even for ASL. It's just yeah. Her <laughs> <laughs> so when I when I was an intern and I was bartending, I remember I told you guys that she used to work at the bar I worked at, and yeah. they hung up her tank top and had an album. Found out a few months later they were lying about the whole thing <laughs> that she had never worked there, and they just put that up there to attract people. Oh my that's god, genius, that's genius! Because I want to even go to that bar now even though i know it's fake yeah. no that part's closed down now uh, what part? calico jack's closed down i could fake oh, oh really yeah yeah huh. why i don't know like, fucking because like uh, the lawsuits a giant bull riding thing in the middle that's, of time no, that's utah's that's oh, johnny okay. utah's <laughs> it is uh gaga's Sorry. Uh, mom still have a restaurant oh, yeah joanne's it's right the best it's so really good. yeah really Upper west side I remember it's when it really opened, it got amazing. bad yeah. fucking reviews, and now... Oh, I think it's like, it's. I went once when it first opened, and it was like, yeah. fine, I feel like it was just a shock value, but I went there recently. It's gorgeous inside, like a beautiful patio area, but it's warm, and it's really nice. I wanted to go with Earl, but I thought it would be cultural appropriation <laughs> if he used the knife and fork. I thought he should have to eat out of a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> out of a zebra skull. I like that he just made a sad face yeah. for that. I won't be doing that. <laughs> I won't disrespect Joanne like that. Yeah. My dentist goes there because it's next to the dentist's Ooh. office, and he said uh, he gets free tickets to see Lady Gaga because what? of it. 
Because he goes enough? Because they go, the dentist is right there. Oh. He goes for free and they come to him. And they do his teeth. For, she does her nice. teeth for free. Yeah. So that's what he fucking yeah. does. He does their teeth and they pay him with fucking tickets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Teeth like for ticks, it's yeah. called. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're setting up another fire fest. That'd be very careful. <laughs> um, Brad Pitt. The great cumber removal for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was at Jennifer Aniston's 50th birthday Ooh. party. Mm. People are excited about that. Yeah, yeah they're really them. looking yeah. into it. That was also like a hundred other people. Yeah. But... John Mayer was there too, but nobody's going crazy about that. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just, for her 50th birthday, all pulled the train on her. <laughs> <laughs> Every guy that she's ever dated. What's your favorite Jennifer Aniston boyfriend? Oh, you've already mentioned it, bro. Brad yeah. Pitt? Brad I mean, that's Pitt. the iconic yeah. one. I, I like the Vince Vaughn era. <laughs> That felt like it was slumming. Yeah. <laughs> slumming. God damn, oh. look at her. I know. Gosh. She's such a doll. 50 years old. She's still the best looking oh friend. So sad. <laughs> yeah, and a good friends. friend, too. Yeah. She is a good friend to everybody <laughs> and because all of her friends work for her. Also, Brad Pitt is a vampire. <laughs> that is, yeah. Yeah. He's 55. He's doing that, and Angelina Jolie selling uh, dogs like dog treats in a park. <laughs> so they're on different journeys. Right now. <laughs> She's selling dog treats in the park, and bags of them that she made at home. She's like, hey, plug everything that uh, Cashmere is doing too. So and I got to tell you, if you follow his Instagram, you will fucking fall out. He is hilarious. <laughs> His Walking new- down the street, so talking good. shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping no one's behind me. But we'll see. <laughs> His new podcast, not another true crime podcast, mm. from Betches Ma- Media, launches on March 1st, and next Wednesday, February 20th, 8 p.m. at the Branded Saloon in Brooklyn, you can see Jersey Poor. And what are you doing in that show, Jersey Poor? I'm uh, hosting a more like a uh, straight up stand up type yeah. of situation. Yeah. Do you like that, or do you like your craziness? I kind of like. The crazy is a little more fun to do, but I yeah. feel like it's probably good to have like a mix of it. Yeah. Just because it's more, you kind of feel like you can be a little bit more good or bad or just do what you want to do in a robe. Right. Sing along to Taylor <laughs> Swift. <but laughs> when I saw you laying down, I'm like, I don't know what, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Because <laughs> I was doing like um, a bit and like then a dance to one of her songs or like interpretive dance, I guess you could call it for 20, 30 seconds. And it was the all too well. So I was ripping up pictures of Jake Gyllenhaal throwing stuff around and just like spilling wine on his face, which the bar didn't love, but I cleaned it up. <laughs> you gotta take leaves. I'll clean it up yeah. <laughs> with my robe. The uh, night I met Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of a funny show over in Queens. <laughs> I was drunk off my ass. Why is he going to that weirdness? You know what really fucking bothered me in that movie? Oh, and geez, the be- he- point at me. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm dealing with Bill Clinton. All right, all right so he says <laughs> they go to that drag bar because he says, I don't know any bar to go to. And then a few minutes later, he they go to that all night cop bar that he says he goes to all the time, and that's been fucking bothering me since the second I sat Sometimes in that theater. You got to suspend this. Not for okay. that. Yes. Yeah. Maybe he forgot about the fucking. Yeah. <laughs> drunk all the time. They Maybe you want to see some drag. Yeah. <laughs> I did not see that movie, but I was excited that Shangela is. In oh, it. You're right. And you know what? She's on for like five seconds an Ariana Grande song. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Shangela brought it. <laughs> <laughs> we were up about four or five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so uh, there's this guy who claimed in back in May that Childish Gambino ripped him off. His name is Jace Harley. Now he's b- back when this first happened. He said. Oh, I'm flattered. I don't see it as ripping off. I see it as maybe as in slight influence. Now he's saying he's completely insulting, insulted. He said uh, Gambino's a house slave who heard the song from the fields and that he wants his credit more than anything. And that Gambino... Right, got sh- it. So, got it so is it one song in particular? Is it something this that- is America. No, but I mean a, his song. American can- Pharaoh is the name of the song. Now, have you heard it? Do you think it I, sounds similar? I mean, it's it sounds similar in the way that... Uh, can you? So it sounds similar in the way that any rap song kind of could sound like another rap song. Okay, I'll be the judge of this. Y'all don't want your daughters to marry us, but they let us dick so I tear it up. Got a wedding and mariners. Half of society scared of us. My nigga, I'm young with no barriers. So if you owe me money, just see me. Police killed my best friend, they shot him dead. Fair enough. I would say it's very, very close. I think it's just a few beats that it's the same way. But the, the fucking way that he's 
using his voice. What would that be called, Daryl? Plagiarism. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was actually just saying the way that you're doing. You're saying straight out plagiarism. Oh yes, it is. Yeah, it, 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 this is. It's, yeah, I heard so, I was just so, like the same cadence. The whole if thing. you guys watched uh, uh, Atlanta, mm-hmm. there's a show that came out five years before called Des Moines. That it is so <laughs> so close to this isn't good. Is that her? You did? Yeah. Well, no, I don't fucking agree with Earl at all. But, but no, if you hear that thing, that the way that he's using his voice above it, I don't think it thing. is. No, uh, to me personally, I think it sounds like a, style, a similar genre. A or style like a of similar, music. It's it's yeah. like saying all mumble rap is the same song. Or yes, well, I've been of. saying that. For <laughs> and it's something. If he really felt it, I feel like he should have said it immediately, not after it won all the awards too. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. just, Hold it just, on a second. Yeah, because it just got, it was the first rap song that ever won record yeah. of the year. And now it's suddenly like, wait, that's mine. When you're like, you had your chance to do that. Right. But you can't just like backtrack. Get all of 20. The, yeah. <laughs> the only thing this guy said that I do agree with is he said that he should have showed up for the award show because, uh, so like Drake showed up, even though he protested it and made a statement mm-hmm. saying this Grammy Award's not what matters. It's, yeah. Stop it. You're too fucking hot into this. Well, screaming I, about it like the Grammys matter. But it's no, but the <laughs> whole point. I I don't like Drake. Let, but me, I, let me just fucking play another thing and see if this doesn't sound exactly like what Chad is. And be almost the one. Elmer So that one's childish. Can be no or not? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you how to be on the radio and not just be fucking screaming like we care about Drake and the Grammys. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, this is. This week's Dish segment is presented by Dish. Tuned in you. We're about to do the last Dish. Why? It's so early. How do we go through so fast? Because we're having a good time. (laughs) This week's Dish is presented by Dish. Tuned in you. To learn more, call 1-844-CALL-DISH or go to dish.com. This is the last Dish. So last Dish. The last Dish. Let's Dish. And you can see Cashmere next Wednesday <laughs> at the Branded Saloon, 8 p.m. for Jersey Poor. Also, his podcast, Not Another True Crime Podcast from Betches Media, launches on March 1st. I like hearing you say Betches Media. Betches <laughs> Media. Betches. So you Betches ready for this yeah. dish? <laughs> I suck on my gut when I'm in the office. <laughs> Very uh, intimidating. George Clooney uh, was defending Meghan Markle. A lot of people have been like talking shit about her and saying that she doesn't get along with her family, mm-hmm. saying she doesn't treat the royals well. George Clooney said, you guys are going to do what you did to Princess Di with this girl. And he sees a very tragic ending for this situation. They have been really rough on her. And I feel like in compa- it's a little strange in comparison to the previous. Came out, yeah. yeah, with but Kate. she was one of them. This girl's yeah. an outsider. Mm-hmm. This is everything that everybody warned but her they, about. But they treat it. I mean, t- to be honest, Kate was an outsider too, right? Like she didn't come from like a not the same kind of outsider. She came from a, you know right an English family and not the same like school. And this and stuff. whole thing is a stupid. You know, this whole thing of who's a queen and who's a princess. It's fucking made up. Yeah. It is literally mean girls that goes back thousand years. Yeah. So they're totally being too rough on her for that. Exactly. Well, the, the, I mean, they were being as expected as they would mm. do. This is not a nice bunch of people. You know what I mean? These are fucking awful people that get paid for what? They got billion <laughs> dollars. Yeah. For what? You're the fucking Mickey Mouse of England. You're not anything. None of this is real. And then when we're like, oh, she wore the had the wrong handbag. You made up. That's <laughs> fucking all thing. These <laughs> it's fucking 2019, okay? This is fucking disco era. <laughs> Look, I, I got a fucking dish that's got people talking. And I could understand why Vito uh, blew it off because, um, well, it's very, very controversial. I go into the cellar last night. And I see a box there of phone bags. They are now having people oh. put their fucking phones in the bag. It's up in the eye bank. Go check it out. And this, and I came in and I'm like, I say to the guy uh, that was working the door, I go, what, fucking Chappelle here? You know, who are we dealing yeah. with? Right. Like, I was like excited to see who's in here. And he's like, it's for all of us. 
<laughs> wow. So is this going to be the standard? Are we they testing know. it out? There's no comment from Noam. And I said, does this go on? And he said, no comment. I did get a comment from Liz, but I don't want to use it because Noam said no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very weird for me to see. Yeah. And I know some people don't like it. Other people, you know, are like, this is the only way to mm -hmm. keep this material from going out. And other people are going, I don't care one way or another. Mm. Yeah. I have went to shows and I use those. I like it a lot better. You like have like knowing that other people aren't going to be using not even that, but it like I didn't I wasn't on my phone at all. Like I was watching the show and everybody else was. There's some people taking that exact same. Yeah, I, I feel like though because whenever if I because I'm someone when I'm at a show I'm just gonna keep my phone in my pocket because yeah. I'm like why would I right. waste the money that I spent for that? But then if I give my phone and something like that, I would be thinking the entire time someone's gonna steal my phone. Someone's gonna steal my phone. I know someone's that gonna steal happened. My phone. Look, I uh, when I was up at the National Comedy Museum, I had to pass everywhere. I went over to Amy's show and I was going to watch, you know, the, you know, from the back. And they say you got to put your phone in here. I'm like, no, thanks. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to give you my phone. Yeah. I don't want my phone locked with something. But now I feel like my issue would be if I was out and I was at a show. That means that somebody would be watching my baby, and I would want to be able to look to see if somebody texted me oh, to just. That's, yeah. I would like to be able to not. But that's you know, the thing. If everybody does that, you know what I mean? You don't have that experience anymore. And every time you're looking to see if you got a text, the waitress or the staff has to come over. They, it's fucking driving everybody crazy. These ones are different, though, because when I've used them in the past, you keep your phone with you and then they give it to you at the end, which like I'm fine. If I'm holding my phone, yes, I'm yeah. fine. It's the same exact yeah. thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, no, because you. Oh, he, they, oh you keep them with it's just yeah. in a little baggie. Oh. Yeah, but it's locked yeah, it's in. Yeah, and then you, you go to like a fucking like, like, yeah. like a security, <laughs> like the thing they use at like stores for oh. security tag. They just do that and it opens right up. But who does it? Now you're waiting longer, mm. right? Because oh, that, that's what, the thing, the line at the end? No, when I went to Radio City and I went to Barclays, two different shows, they used those. There was no way to do it. Like you got right out. And you loved Barclays? it. I, so when I used yeah, it. Yeah, what do they not want you taking a picture of a basketball game? <laughs> no, it was for <laughs> so many people. It was for oh, Chappelle and it was for Chris Rock. The Chappelle one, it was great because he had a Cypher Sounds just doing like warm up like DJing before and usually you'd be sitting there on your phone you'd be fucking around but instead he had people doing sing-alongs he had people like into it dancing well, anyway let's talk about the cellar okay uh, and I think there's other clubs doing this already you know what I mean maybe this is just gonna be comedy from this point yeah, on it's possible yeah yeah anyway it's up on the uh, I bang right now um, go and check that out Dude, let's do this more. You're so I know, so it's always fun. fun. Oh. And when you do this, are you going to have m murdered families guests <laughs> yeah. on your show? I'm actually, <laughs> I'm a medium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a medium in a large shirt. Yeah, I'm just going to make it work. <laughs> but do you know the thing that you're doing? Uh, yeah, so it's going to be, uh, you. Kind, we kind of take a case that is sort of probably like either solved or kind of still in the open and either yeah. interview the people that are either experts of it. Oh, well, that's a lot. Or kind of, yeah, unpack ones like that are a little bit more, we'll have like more fun-ish ones like the bling ring, but then also ones where it's kind of like, all right, this uh, college student was murdered and this is what we know. Here's someone who like did a deep dive reporting on it or here's like the police. Wow, from the area. that'd be interesting. I know, it's cool. And it's something I never really looked that much into true crime before, but I got into it lately and it's sort of just like a thought like it's a cool new thing that i would like to wrap my head around because it's a lot of times depressing but it's very fascinating we uh the tomorrow is the one year anniversary of the parkland yeah show, and, and uh it, it seems strange it was a very fast year wasn't it yeah That's it really it. was yeah. yeah so i mean i'm wondering when that stuff we really don't know what made this nutty kid do this do yeah. for all the shows that are on does anyone ever do these about what happened in Virginia and all, all yeah, these other places? We never know. Yeah. We never know it's, what makes them snap. It's, it's total mystery. It's insane. I have my own theory. It's the lack of peanuts. <laughs> Kids do not eat enough peanuts. <laughs> they are just <laughs> desperate for protein. A little salt on top. Yeah. <laughs> Where did they just read they're banning? Oh, there's a ballparks now. They're, they're getting rid of peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I don't care if I'm from yeah. <laughs> um, people will, I know you say fuck that somebody will go there and die. They have to worry mm. about if they're like, oh, the kid sat on a fucking peanut and died. You yeah. don't even have to yeah. eat it. No. That is an allergy that I can't believe is so intense, too. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. And uh, I've seen women on uh, TV just like screaming, you don't understand. 
they can't have a peanut in the room. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, she's, you know. Yeah. you got a bubble kid. Right? She, <laughs> should be, she should be as freaked out as she is. I know a girl who walked into a Five Guys, didn't know about oh, the whole God. thing. Yeah, that's his penis city. fucking ran out. She said she felt her throat close up as she walked in. Oh, From a cock in it? Or... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, thank my friend. You. Oh, you're the love best. you, Cashmere. Love you, guys. You're the best. The best. Uh, right back uh, with our guests. Uh, Mike Racine and Sean Patton. Very, very funny comedians. This is Bennington. Faction Talk 103. It's the Bennington Show. Upgrade to Dish. Take your home TV anywhere. No matter where you are with the Dish Anywhere app, you can stream live satellite TV, watch everything on your DVR. And choose from thousands of on-demand movies on the go. Enjoy your favorite shows and the most popular movies with just your phone, tablet, or computer, even if you aren't able to be in the comfort of your own home. Upgrade to Dish for better technology, better customer service, and a better TV experience. The Dish Anywhere app. Just one more reason Dish stays tuned into you. Watching TV anywhere requires internet-connected Hopper with Sling or Hopper 3 and compatible device. To learn more, dial 1-844-CALL-DISH or visit dish.com. Dish tuned into you. Welcome back to Bennington. Sean Patton and Mike Racine are in studio. Wow. Hi. Hi. Oh, hello. Wow. Mike's podcast, The Sit Down with Mike Racine, is available now on iTunes and patreon.com slash sitdownpod. And Sean Patton, he's performing tomorrow through Sunday at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Go to meshawnpatton.com for tickets and all Do it. dates. I uh, just watched Sean tear the roof off the Comedy Cellar literally with a bit that I don't think any other single person in the country could do. Wait, what? You know what I mean, what? so exclusive to you. It's your OCD. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, I like that. I like talking about that sort of thing because you realize I used to be, I used to not like talking about it because it's so fucking weird. Yeah. But even living with it my whole life, you're like, you still day to day are like, this is crazy. No yeah. one can know. But then you start talking about it and you realize how many other crazy right. people there are. Well, everybody, I think, has something that they're yeah, obsessive exactly. about, but not, not the same way or the same levels. It's always fascinating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, do you have any at all? For yeah, of course he does. Stuff that I obsess about? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing you want to share with us. What do I obsess about? <laughs> <laughs> Is it spaghetti sauce? Is that Probably it? my spaghetti sauce. Yeah. yeah. Are you still yeah. making that? Yeah, I'm making it. Yeah. It's so fucking heavy, though. The jars. <laughs> carrying them around. I didn't anticipate that. You I take hate them it. on the road with you? Yeah. <laughs> I hate it so much. Wait, this is I a real thing? Either. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? I thought it, I thought it was a joke. It was a like joke. an ongoing I made joke. You were sauce and sell it at him. I want car. some of your pasta sauce. All right, I'll get you some. People I believe, love it. Yeah. People love it, but yeah. And then ship. I've st so I just started shipping, but uh -huh. that's, you know, that's uh, comes with its own problems because you don't know what the shipping cost right. is going to be for how many jars. So I'm going to probably kill myself this week. <laughs> Please don't. I, we, we need don't sauce. Don't do it over sauce. Yeah, don't do it over sauce. Here's, I always find uh, interesting when it comes to like things like that, and, and we've been in this discussion before. But what is the perfect alcoholic and also the perfect non-alcoholic drink to have when you're eating pasta? Ooh. I would just say a nice red wine. That red bears. wine. I like a well, Mexican Coke. Yeah. Mexican Coke. <laughs> you know I what agree. I'm talking about? Out yeah. of bottle. Yeah. yeah. One time, I one time I tried to drink milk with spaghetti, and my father was like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, they get upset like, with mad you. At me. Yeah. Now, uh, but it's I'm, good because the acid from yeah. the tomatoes and the the right. you know the basicness of the milk. Yeah, the basicness. <laughs> and yet, no one in Italy would <laughs> ever think of themselves. Can I get mm. some cow's milk with this? There's mm -hmm. pretty much no savory food I think that goes well with milk. Like the, if it, if we're dealing with savory, mm. I don't think milk should be involved. I'm going to give you a weird well, one with go me. Go for it. I like milk. This is the only time I have milk with cold fried chicken. And I don't know why. Whoa. Okay. I okay. literally fucking crave it like a pregnant woman. You know what I mean? Like, I always wow. make sure if I'm having fried chicken, I go, because I don't have it with hot fried chicken. But when I cold, it, I don't know whether I had it at a picnic when I was a little kid. Yeah, I don't know what there's, there's got to be a specific time. <laughs> and I don't eat in front of anybody. <laughs> I would never do that. Whoever killed, kidnapped you and held you hostage yeah. as a kid yeah. fed you cold fried chicken and milk, and you blocked it out, but you remember the deliciousness. <laughs> yeah. I agree, though, uh, a Coke with pizza is the same thing with Italian. A Coke with pizza. Yeah. I don't nice, like yeah. to... I don't drink Coke any other time, and I'm I'm not even a fan of the... Uh, I mean, I prefer it like a Mexican yeah. Coke when it has real oh, yeah. sugar oh, in it, because that's, that's like oh, yeah. the most delicious. Mm -hmm. um, Root beer's good with Coke, too. 
Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Rupert's good with pizza. <laughs> I mean, I will drink. He needs cocaine. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah. See you later. Yeah. I gotta go make more sauce. <laughs> <laughs> What's really being shipped in those jars, Mike? <laughs> I found a finger in one. I don't know whether it was a message to me. Yeah, I gave your money back. Yeah. <laughs> now you you make your sauce where? You still did creating the cave? No, at my apartment. At your apartment? Yeah, I, I would cook at Rebecca's yeah overnight, yeah. but uh, you know, falling out. Fine. Yeah, big falling out. <laughs> I mean, the 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 the. I, if you'd have told me when I met you that you were going to make and sell sauce, I'd have thought I don't ever. I would never try that sauce. Yeah, because I'd be afraid of what was in that sauce. Right. Well, look, because you've we known all, me for a long. We time. were all volatile young men once. Yeah, we were. Yeah. But yeah, now, yeah. now I trust it out. you. Now I'm trust, <laughs> I trust you and what is in these sauce. Right. Well, but well, I wouldn't be surprised if the, at the end, like after. Millions of jars are shipped. You yeah. come on this radio show in five years and go, by the way, with blood, there was so much blood. We, mm. We'll all laugh. <laughs> there was, there was, but it was delicious like, and no, it went I mean, well with yeah. Coke. You know, I got responsibilities now. <laughs> yeah. I met Sean when I was uh, 20. Yeah. So, Yo. It's funny, like... Yeah, one time well, you met we, you and I, you myself, Rogelio Rah- Perez and Jermaine Fowler went and did a you a remember this prom, yeah. a prom comedy show, a post prom comedy show oh in Jersey. Oh my god! Yeah. And they and they ended the show before I even got on. <laughs> 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 yeah, they were like, you guys get yeah. I've been to proms when I was a kid, and I didn't want to see stand up after. No, you want a finger. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You want to explore you want your dry body. hump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to hear. Older people talk about how hopeless the world is. Right, right. One of the parents came out. They were like, "All right, now before you kids dry hump, we got something for you. (laughs) (laughs) Some comedians, (laughs) two years older than you. Do you you know Sirius XM? (laughs) (laughs) To get you guys in the mood for touching genitals for the first time. Uh, Hey, Steve, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, you guys were talking about uh, people having to put their phones in those bags. It's a new thing at the cellar. I don't know whether you guys saw Uh, it, but they just love it. Bags, love it. Yeah, I was there. I was there Thursday night, and I saw a guy take Sean's picture, and he stopped everything. Really? They went over. They took the guy. Yeah. It's new joke night. That guy took your picture over on your right. Mm. Oh, and they went and, ja- they went and jammed him up? Yeah, they made him yeah, a race. they don't like I mean, that's, I the, that's the word that they've had said, to do there. And I've seen, because, you know, you can, if you're in the olive tree, you can go, you, you have to use the restroom. That's it. I've seen people get caught walking just oh, with wow, their phone, yeah. uh, what, like setting up to steal a little bit guy, of somebody's act. This guy's flash went off, and Sean just stopped and went, "Hey, motherfucker, you delete that right now!" And <laughs> did that happen? Security went over there. Yeah, I did. Go. I did say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean it, but I said it. But I meant yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, thanks for coming. Thanks for yeah, coming that, to New Joke Night. Yeah. <laughs> No That's problem. always a shock I've, for I've people here. when they're at New Joke Night. Too. I don't work the cellar because I support Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> he's very edgy. Oh. He's an edgy like guy. Saying, he's very edgy. <laughs> when did I see your Twitter? You were there was some comic you were making a run at like a oh, couple e- weeks ago. Ian, maybe. Was Ian, it Ian Finance? No, that would no. be for fun. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Make was a, like a more oh maybe of a um suit. well no I just I mean I just thought this was funny I don't have yeah. anything against but I said uh, p- crashing's in its third season uh, <laughs> hey Pete Holmes why don't you crash a jet into the World Trade Center yeah no, and that was no. fun <laughs> and I felt like why would I not say that it's so funny I <laughs> you put at Pete Holmes no you didn't no I didn't I don't I don't no 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 okay. but if he name searches himself he put <laughs> That happened to a friend of mine. My, a friend of mine tweeted about Chelsea Clinton recently. Yeah. He said Chelsea Clinton's not Jewish; she's just ugly. And then Chelsea Clinton <laughs> quote tweeted it and said, yeah. Don't "Feel free to not look at me, but leave the Jews out of it." Wow. My friend's Jewish too. But I'll tell you because this has happened to me in fucking radio. Yeah, is that listeners will just take it and send it to the person. Yeah, right. so yeah, 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 yeah. Jim Jeffries was uh, everybody's saying, a rat. Yeah, yeah um, everybody's yeah. a rat. Like if Jim Jeffries says like he something against guns, mm-hmm. fucking they'll send it to Anthony Cumia, who's pro guns. Mm. Oh, your buddy Jim Jeffries. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Right. You know, yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody wants like, to poke the badger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say for Pete, like, it's yeah, all he had to do was get a couple people to recommend him. Then he would have got a pass at the cellar. He didn't have to <laughs> go get a TV show and then, you know, and then right. film an entire long, season right. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you just got some wrecks, Pete. <laughs> you, you, you did it the hard way. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he said he, he didn't get on until he had the show about the cellar. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> there, and there, I'm going to do a show go. about Natalie Portman's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? I'll watch that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't miss a yeah, fucking yeah. episode, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right, here's here's the, here's the do you, show. Do you like? Do you? Do it's you? like the magic school bus. For, uh, <laughs> for, for, <laughs> no, 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 I want to hear the pitch now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Natalie Portman's vagina <laughs> with Mike Racine. Yeah. What would you call the show, really? I don't know. If in some weird world that someone actually greenlit this TV show <laughs> a, about a, a young comedian's no, obsession with that, that. I, you wouldn't do it? I respect women. I'll tell you why I won't watch the show, Mike, is because I, res I respect Palestine. <laughs> 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 she's one. She's way pro-Israel. Yeah. She no, she, got, right? she just got in trouble for oh, it. So now she's out. Yeah. Um, um, Natalie Portman. Oh, Natalie Portman. Which, like, okay. so, people just support Israel because it's where they like fucked the first time. Yeah. So she they said, all went on birthright I can't and, remember yeah. what the statement was, but now she's like persona non grata from Israel. Yeah, they yeah. feel like she said something uh, too, uh, you know, open hearted. Maybe I guess. she said, it, maybe if we didn't use bullets or something. You right. Know? Because yeah. it's the. Maybe one we should thing shoot kids with rubber bullets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The one thing Knives that the only. left and yeah. right agree with is like just all Israel. All the time, yeah. yeah. Is around the clock Israel. Yeah. <laughs> wait, the, what, um, what, fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, wait, is anybody here Jewish? Um, no. Well, Chris is. I uh, took a DNA test. And I'm 20 percent Ashkenazi. <laughs> oh, no smokes. Yeah. Could you go on birthright now because of that? I think little, you can. Oh, <laughs> yeah. A little. No. little, 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 little <laughs> now he's going on birthright. I it's like some kind of comedy. Did try to go and just went with a bunch of 17 year old <laughs> kids. Great. My back's killing me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> my my yeah, my name's uh, my name's Timmy. I'm 17. <laughs> no, my my girlfriend went a couple years ago because 27 she is a oh, cutoff well, age. 27, okay. yeah. And she went. And she said it was like, oh, yeah, they're just trying to get you to fuck. Right. And yeah. stay oh, in Israel. They want you to fuck. Yeah, yeah. The memories, yeah. right? The memories yeah. of Israel. They want you to party and bone and never want to leave. And that happened to a guy I know uh, in high school afterwards. He went to Israel and never came back. I, th I think he became a Jew. He could have died. I don't know if he's alive or dead. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming he just got really into the. Shit got weird, though. You know that? He oh, went man. deep in, like, Apocalypse Now. Yeah, I'm assuming he's uh, read the Torah and he's all twirling, twirling like. Twir I don't know. What do they do? Do. Twirl? <laughs> I think they twirl. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Do, do a lot of twirling. Do a lot of twirling. I don't know. Yeah. You know, Natalie Portman did in that one movie anyway. <laughs> fucking thing was taken over her. I tell you what, if yeah. you, I, I recently on a plane yeah. watched The Professional again, though. Yeah. It's now called Leon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That movie's great. She's oh, really yeah, great yeah, in that yeah. movie. She's, she's an amazing. She's nine year old or however old yeah. she is. Yeah. yeah. And in but it was made by girls. In the movie, Beautiful Girls. Oh, yeah. Girls. She's fantastic. Did you ever yeah. see that? As an overly precocious. Yeah. No. Yeah. Where the, like a grown guy kind of falls into friendship, love with her. And she's just like a beautiful young. That face is the same face as now. Yeah. And she was a great actress. Yeah. She was uh, so good. And everybody was uncomfortable until she turned 18. Yeah. Which yeah, is great because yeah, yeah. his own yeah. friends yeah, were yeah. like, hey, dude, that's like a uh, kid. <laughs> By the way, Earl, this Homeland thing, I'm trying to uh, hook up for black people. And so you go to Homeland. Oh, hey, Earl. Yeah. It's a one way ticket, though. And wait, 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 um, <laughs> I've got the Proud Boys supporting it. <laughs> wait, Have you ever, would you ever go back, Earl? I would love to go back to visit, but not to, to go stay. Yeah, well, maybe you'd fall in love with it, though. I always like to check out the Ivory Coast and all that stuff. Yeah, like, it was, it's I'm, beautiful I'm, there. But I'm too much of a New Yorker. Mm. Yeah. The the Africa of America, yes. as it's called. <laughs> 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 wait, wait. Have you been to Africa, no. Ron? I would go. Have you been? No. <laughs> like, I, I, would, I would. Mike Racine, have you been to Africa? <laughs> Don't they love your sauce? Over <laughs> I would love to go. I mean, yeah. I'm, yeah. Mike, would you go donate 200 jars of your sauce to poor villages? Uh, in African countries, if that were if, sure, if they wanted your sauce, two hundred jars is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a, lot. it's a lot. How about one big it's like bat? Three days of yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to buy each jar, right? That's not cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> so though, it's the worst thing I've ever done. But hey, if I called my website because I do it. With my brother, I call. I, I called my brother a leech last night in a te in a text. Yeah, for what reason? Be because he he sold some at his work and he didn't pay me back, and I we're, right. we're still. I put all the raw costs on my credit card. Yeah, I said I should have hired someone instead of helping out your leech ass. Oh, mm. okay. This yeah. is what this being a is this is what you being, apart. Yeah. yeah, I know. That's what being a business owner does. <laughs> it destroys I mean, you. Wait, it destroys your. 
but you're in business with your brother. Yeah. My, my, my family has a catering company and none of them speak anymore. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a family it's, business. It's ruined. Ruins. Yeah. Ruined. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> just went yeah, through yeah, this yeah. five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I noticed she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Expected to see you. Where? <laughs> oh, not here. <laughs> uh, go ahead and plug, Chris. It seems like you don't want to plug oh, anymore. I, I do want to plug. a good idea. Oh, I know no. 20% of you is like, where's, you know, what's <laughs> going on? Sean Patton and Mike Receder here. Sean's performing tomorrow through Sunday at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Me, SeanPatton.com for tickets and all Sean's dates. And Mike's podcast, The Sit Down with Mike Racine, that's available now on iTunes and Patreon.com slash Sit Down Pod. Sean's Sean's one of the best. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. He's one of the best comics I know. Go see him. Oh, thank you, Mike. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. Thank you. I saw you out on the road with Kreischer and that. Yeah, that storytelling show. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you have, have you ever been to Salt Lake City? Uh, yeah, years ago. I had never been, and uh, a way you forget that any city in such a because you think just Mormon, right? But any city in a place like that's going to be the opposite yes. of whatever the state is. That's how New Orleans is like right. that, you know. And uh, it was a Salt Lake was awesome, but that club is great. Wise guys, I'd yeah. never been. Great. Um, they should have an apostrophe in there, I think. They yeah. should make it possessive. It's just like wise guys. I think they should apostrophe us it. But there's only one wise guy. Yeah, it's, it's one wise or, guy. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not just one oh, okay, wise guy. Okay. It's a collection no, of... apostrophe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But th- aside from that, that Sorry, club dude. was great. But yeah, that was fun. That was a fun... Uh... Well, SLC Punk, remember that movie oh, yeah. from years ago? It was yeah. about a punk scene. That was in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Salt Lake City. Yeah. We were also there during, we were snowboarding and shit during, uh, in Park City during Sundance. We were like, oh, there's going to be, there's nobody. They all, it's such an exclusive festival that they, they go hide in their super rich right. after parties and no one's hanging out on the mountain. It was, it was kind of crazy. I already broke his wrist because he's a masochist. Now he uh, said he was racing. Was he racing? Here's what happened. Yeah. Three of us, Norman. Bert and I are snow we're snowboarding. Ren is easy. Uh, Ryan O'Neill and Ari are skiers. They're smoking us. Yeah. Bert, we, we we suck, but we're good enough. But we get to the middle of the mountain. We have a few beers, and Ari decides us ski. We can go back up to the top and beat you guys down before you get down. <laughs> and we're like, that's not any possible at all. We're all like three beers in. We're like, fuck it, we're doing it. And they go up to the top. We halt like some of the best snowboarding you've ever seen. Three, uh, two pudgy guys and one. Have you ever seen Norman without his shirt on? By the way, no. he's unreasonably cut. Yeah, it's, yeah. He's, I, I think that he's from the cut. amount of women, women that he it's gets. Like, he's yeah. Like, yeah, he takes off his shirt. Like, oh, you're like a psycho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're a psycho. Oh, you've definitely murdered people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, we haul. We get to the bottom of the mountain and we're like, we have a few victory beers and they're like, wait, where are they? And then Bert texts them and Ari texts back, get another round. Gonna be a while. Broke something. So wow. yeah, he racing. His own, I guess his own dare down the yes. mountain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he put himself in that position. Yeah, he broke his wrist. Uh, but other than that, he's a pretty good skier. Yeah, but <laughs> how far does he have to go to get that taken care of? Is is it far? Once, no. once your hand breaks. Oh, yeah, they, they cart you off the mountain. Yeah, you're off the yeah. mountain, and then yeah. you got a ways to go. They just you took know. him off the mountain, and then we went and did shows that night. It was pretty funny. Well, he didn't even get it fixed. He didn't get it fixed that first night, and ever, so every time he like went to lift the mic out of the stairs, oh, <laughs> it, was, man. it was like hilarious to watch. Yeah. It's like, how you guys doing? <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> anyway, uh, and Ari already kind of performs with his arm like right. in a natural sling pose. <laughs> but yeah, it was it no, was it fun. Is true. He does have yeah. a weird yeah. stance <laughs> and a rock on stage. Yeah, if you were watching an Ari Shafir set without the sound on, you would assume he was bombing. <laughs> <laughs> by how he stands. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just assume he just wasn't having fun. But, but I agree. That sounds yeah. brutal to get injured on the mountain. Oh, yeah. yeah and then man. have to... My yeah. friend's well, dad had uh, had a heart attack. He was skiing, and he had a heart attack when he was at the top of the mountain. It was his second heart attack, so he knew he was having one. Fuck. Oh, and he's at the top Jeez. of the mountain, and then he's like, well, the fastest way is to ski down. He skis down While to the mountain. While having a heart attack? Uh, yeah. This guy's a fucking So then he baller. skis down. He gets to the bottom, and he's like, well, I guess it's over, but I still have to go to the hospital. Yes. So he goes and takes a shower and then goes to the hospital, and they were so <laughs> mad at him. They're yeah. like, you really really could have died and he's like yeah but i felt better they're like it doesn't work like that i've been through that with fez so many times too (laughs) and one time he uh they said well we were he i uh, go to the doctor he calls me the doctor's my neighbor he goes run i'm having a heart attack right now hooked up to the thing 
So I go running up there, and they go, uh, we need you to go to the hospital. This was like his first one. And we're like, okay, you got an ambulance? And I go, not in New York. Uh, you're not <laughs> going to get an ambulance. So we looked out, they get a cab, and, you know, it, it was like pre-Uber, so there was no cab. And we walked to the hospital. Oh, God. We walked to <laughs> the That's fucking insane. hospital, yeah. I mean, the proof that Goodfellas is the greatest, one of the greatest films of all time is my dad, when he had a heart attack, I was the only person home. He had the heart attack, it mellowed out, then we watched Goodfellas. Good, smart and it was on TV. It wasn't even on <laughs> yeah. like HBO, it was just right. on. And we, he's like, let me just sit down for a minute. And it was the scene where it's like, the there was, you know, Mickey two times, because he right, says everything yeah, yeah. two times. And then we watched the whole fucking movie on the on TV, there were commercial breaks, <laughs> and then afterwards he was like, "All right, now we should go." And I was like, "Oh yeah, you were having a heart attack, right?" But it's so good, isn't it? That's how good Goodfellas yeah, is, even on TV. In, yeah. he, noticed, he sees there's no one there, and he uh, knows he's going to get it. No, oh, yeah. you know, at the end of that movie where they're all where he's all coked up and paranoid could give me a heart attack. Oh yeah, like I'll turn it off. Oh, like it's, it's just because it's that's worse than the murder scenes for me. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. see the helicopters. You just see helicopters, and he's so. Uh, the fact that he's coked up and he has to do fucking errands, uh, mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. That he's <laughs> coked up and doing errands. <laughs> but, but, or like when you go, made, yeah, when, would made, you, sorry. Okay, when would you go see a doctor and a doctor mm -hmm. give you free pills? Uh, that's one thing. That was so 80s. Yeah. Where he's like, the doctor gave me some Valium. I'm like, what? Where, who's your health care provider? <laughs> right. How would that even be allowed? Yeah. All you got to do is have a decent rap and they'll, they'll fucking have the pills for you. <laughs> Um, but you were going to ask a question. Oh, I'm just saying, cooking for a lot of people, it's it's stressful when you're not a, a, a drug dealer. <laughs> <We're> not, <laughs> <we're> not, <laughs> <laughs> we got veal. You got to make you got to make a little cutlet. You got to do the apps. The, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. But yeah. the way they shaved the garlic down, so it just looked. Fun. That was, was pretty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful scene. <laughs> you know, I actually, I used to, I have, can, I've tried, I tried that once. Shaving garlic. Shaving, yeah. It's not it's, it's not really necessary. It's not necessary. No, it's also yeah. not as easy as it looks yeah. on yeah. thirty five millimeter. You can still taste the garlic no matter what. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you mince it or whatever. So yeah. Garlic it's cool, literally makes everything better. Mm -hmm. It does. Like just some fucking garlic. It's mm -hmm. really weird. It's Is there miracle. like any better smell than like garlic mm -hmm. hitting oil? It's like the yes. best smell in the world. There's probably some maybe better basil, smells. Maybe yeah. But but <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> maybe uh, it's you know a Mexican Coke. <laughs> that, that when you first open it, maybe maybe Natalie Portman's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love our call our callback sets. Yeah. It's like mine's gonna be Mexican Coke, his gonna be Natalie Portman's vagina. Yeah. Yeah. I think his works a little stronger. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, because I, I I've been I, I'm 40 now, so I'm I'm trying to give a shit about what I eat and I'm on a diet. Not, but I'm on that intermittent fasting diet. It's good. We were just talking I like about it. Yeah, that. Yeah, I like it because you can kind of eat anything. Yeah. It's bad when you cheat on it, though, because then you're like, man, I ate like a death row inmate all day, and now I'm cheating. <laughs> and now I'm eating more. Yeah. Uh, so how, what, what is your time limit there? Your I mean, I time? do the eight-hour blocks, but I yeah. just I start it whenever I have... So mine just started, like, right before I got here. As soon as you have your first meal. First meal, then eight hours. And then hours, you have yeah. eight hours. I do it to the minute, too. Yeah. The moment I'm done, like, that last swallow, I look yeah. at the time, and to the minute. And that last half hour is nice, because if you're a little hungry, yeah, yeah. You, know, you just eat a bunch, and then you, just you don't eat anymore. Go like a psycho, yeah. yeah. But, but you don't feel a little panicky when you're like, okay, now I'm on a fucking 16 hour run. I think I would. Yeah, <laughs> I like think I 16 would. hours. T. 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 Okay. T helps. But also, it's going to be sleeping. Apparently, right? garlic sleep? you should have with every meal. Mm. Yeah, it's like without good for your yeah. blood and your heart and yeah. all these yeah. things that you're, no one gives a shit about until you're 40. Immune system, too. Mm. Yeah. Immune system's good for that. Yeah. Mm. For, Chris, what do you do? You do anything? No, I uh, eat, drink, uh, everything I want to, uh -huh. and uh, smoke, and uh, we'll vape. Well, you look great. Yeah. Yeah. How do you yeah, do yeah, it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. How do you do it, Christopher? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just my metabolism. Bro. It's fucking amazing. I mean, if you stop it. If, if, for the listeners, if you've never seen Christopher, he sounds exactly like his voice. Great. Like just just uh, five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Uh, sculpted pecs. Ripped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Rossi and Sean Patton are here. Sean's performing tomorrow through Sunday at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Me, SeanPatton.com for tickets and all of Sean's dates. And Mike's podcast, The Sit Down with Mike Racine, available now on iTunes and Patreon.com slash Sit Down Pod. Now, because you uh, are the way that you don't have a living relative at yes. all. Wow. You have no idea what the diseases that your family is known for. None whatsoever. The only thing I really know is addiction runs, but that's not like a. It's like well, what is a disease yeah. according to the fucking rehab people? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cancer or any of that stuff. I don't know. Right. Or like heart disease. 
Oh, yeah. That's, it, that's isn't that one. weird that he doesn't have one living relative? I've never met another person. That Is one? that true? Yeah. yeah. It's true, yeah. Were you an orphan? I was an only child, and then my parents were only children, and then I they passed away when I was younger. Okay. You, you had a grandmother. You never had a grandfather. Never met any of my grandfathers. Only met one grandmother. Who do you yeah. have in your life? I have a girlfriend, Mike, okay. all right? So, <laughs> I, I, I'm, just making, I'm just making that's, sure. That's fairly yeah. new. That's fairly new, yeah. 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 You get a Before dog that, or something? Before scary when yeah. we needed yeah, yeah, to yeah. get a hold of him. Never, and <laughs> oh, he's my supers, though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he did. Because he, you know, takes pills and drinks. Hi, Juan. Can you check on Chris? He's right, too. Check on the body, would you? Yeah. You have an extra key to that apartment. Yeah, right? I'll give you an extra twenty bucks if you find a body. No, no living relative. Let's. I thought you were going to say when I asked you were an orphan. I thought you were going to say, "Well, I raised myself. I've been on the streets and so I just don't, just don't remember anything before that." No, no. There were three people that said they were my uh, relatives, but they're all gone. Mm. He wow. actually still lives in his uh, grandmother's apartment. He's one of those. He's got the. He's like he's like the the dead hooker from Godfather Two, where they're oh. like, "This guy had no family." Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> all hurt. that's left is our friendship. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but, that's you should you should definitely procreate then. I don't want to. I have no, no interest in having children. He's 100 percent right. against it. You should yeah. donate your sperm. I don't know. So there's a little Stanley's running around. Yeah, why would yeah, <laughs> they read the profile? <laughs> yeah. If there's no. like a weight on there, no one's fucking touching that. But um, but that thing it never weirded you out that you don't have anybody. Uh, it. Not usually, no. And like, even when I was a child, when my parents were alive, I would like have nightmares about having even like a brother or sister. I thought it was like that. I can I couldn't even imagine that. Why? Yeah, uh, I think I was worried about the money because they were they, not very. They didn't have a lot of cash. <laughs> a little good. child worried. I about know. Money. Makes me sad. Do you, have, yeah. just, do you have siblings? I do. I have a brother. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, bro- yeah. Let me Younger tell you this. They never worried about money. You know what I mean? Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's great. We were like, we should have more kids. <laughs> <laughs> we had to provide it. <laughs> Wait, how many siblings do you have, Mike? One? Just a brother? I'm the oldest of four. Me too. Yeah. Oldest oh, okay. of four. Yeah. That explains it. Explains our symbiosis. Two years apart. You Catholic? Yeah. Well, n- 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 non-denominational. Mm-hmm. We went to. I went to Catholic school as a, uh, in Louisiana because they're the better schools. Uh, the school system in Louisiana is fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, but all the money and all the good resources go to Catholic schools. So now, I did go. Yeah. Being the oldest, did you feel a responsibility, or you still feel a responsibility for your siblings? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I yeah. think I showed them what not to do. Right. I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think my from thirteen to like. 22 was just a display of hey guys don't don't do right. what Sean's doing and he, the one after you is conservative would you say no nah, none of them are none oh, of them are of they're them. all they're all pretty good people they're all I mean yeah. I don't think either, either, you do kind of set the pace for the other yeah. siblings yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. well normally they always say if the first one is not a rebel if the first one is like a rule follower the second one's a rebel but if the first one's a rebel the second one will be a rule follower. They just want right. to. Oh, well, then by it. that, my yeah. okay, my, my sister right after me on the surface was a rule follower, yes. Right. But she got away with murder, yeah. uh, like, almost literally. Like, she did far more fucked up shit than I did, but knew how to hide it. Yeah. And knew how to not get busted. Because I was just, and I was also, didn't realize, I ran interference basically for her entire high school career. Didn't even realize I was doing it. Right. I was just always in trouble, always, my parents were just always on me. She's doing blow no. Fucking smoking weed, partying, she sneaking out, great. and but no one. She's but cool. She yeah. just yeah, she's great. Yeah. <laughs> she's great. She's great. My, I, I lucked out with my siblings because I, I meet people yeah. who have like asked like you know brothers and sisters that fight and don't talk and steal money from each other and right. shit like that. And I lucked. My siblings are the most important people in my life. Some yeah. siblings fight over yeah. sauce. I mean, it's pretty. <laughs> exactly. sad. Yeah. We're gonna be yeah. fine. Yeah. He just you needed to. Leech. Leech. <laughs> he just needed to learn a lesson. <laughs> my, si- my siblings and I, we make a sibling gumbo and we don't even charge. We just give it away. Wow. <laughs> Wow. We never fight over Isn't that nice, Sean? Isn't that nice? I have no family. <laughs> right. But my was, sauce is my blood. I think I was more like you. I remember my parents saying to me, could you at least hide some of this stuff? You know what I mean? <laughs> I would just come in through the fucking... I just, I was yeah. maybe too comfortable with it all. I love the know? idea of a young Ron Bennington still having two pairs of glasses on his head. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, still started. reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> just like a young you. That's ever a Bennington TV show <laughs> where they do a flashback. It's got to be you <laughs> reading glasses, sunglasses. <laughs> and it's an cig- unlit cigar. And uh, uh, just a fucking little baby doing that. <laughs> Look, everybody. Chris, plug away. Okay, yes. Sean Patton, Mike Racine, they're in studio. Mike Racine's podcast, The Sit Down with Mike Racine. That's available now on iTunes. Go to patreon.com slash 
slash sit down pod. And Sean's performing tomorrow through Sunday at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Me, Sean Patton.com for tickets and all of Sean's dates. Uh, Mike, what's Thank the you. podcast all about? What's happening? There? It's about organized crime. So mm-hmm. everything that kind of falls under that umbrella. So we talk about the mob, but then we also talk about like stuff in the news and we talk about frauds and corporate stuff. And Do you like whatever. New York history with the crime, the New York crime family history? Yeah, I like yeah. it, but sometimes yeah. it's like kind of the same story over and over again. So right. you have to dig to find like the interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah. Oh man, I I I think we talked about me doing your podcast once, and it never happened. I'm sorry. No, you're always like yeah. out of town. But, but I I I because I, I, I have a theory that the Bonanno family they say they were the most ruthless, mm-hmm. and I, I I heard this. I heard that's because people made fun of their name the most. Oh really? Oh of yeah. Bonanno, <laughs> yeah. Bonanno, and then it's <laughs> like. It's so funny, yeah, like the, the <laughs> fragility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There was a there was a family in Jersey, and uh, the the boss was gay, and they found out, and then they killed him. But then they couldn't tell anybody else that their boss was gay, so they were just like, "Yeah, we don't know what happened to him." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, it was embarrassing that they yeah. had a gay. Yeah. Boss. He wasn't enough for snow shoes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, I remember when John Gotti died. It was like the last real New York fucking minute. I thought because. Mm. As the funeral is going down the street, all those guys, they did the flowers that were shaped like martini glasses Mm -hmm. and cards and horses and whatever. These giant, it was like the Rose Bowl parade (laughs) of fucking vices. Did you see the Travolta movie? Yeah, I did. So so, so at at the end of the movie, they're like interviewing people at John Gotti's funeral and everybody's like, he kept the neighborhood safe. And it's like, I could watch this like all day. (laughs) This starts out with Travolta. As dead John Gotti talking to the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, so yeah. fucking weird. <laughs> oh, the John Is yeah, it yeah. good? No. Ah, no, it's yeah. not good, but you're not. Have you ever turned off a mob movie in your life? I just always yeah. will watch a fucking mob movie. My dad had a heart attack while watching one. <laughs> Still watch. Wait, it's not good, but you'll. It, it's fun. Well, it's, you remember the other day. Gotti movie? The, like HBO? Armando Sante movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that one. Yeah, but our, our, Jesus, you even remember you without hesitate Armando Sante that yeah that mm-hmm. one like without yeah. hesitation you knew it's crazy <laughs> yeah no I, I, isn't aren't they back though isn't like there more mafia activity there I, might be because like a lot of again? people who went away in the nineties yeah they're yeah. like uh, they're coming back but I you think know it's the funny. Russians now though right it's I think like it's the Russians Russian and Russians don't have a need for attention like right. Italians do exactly. they kind of, they don't, they don't like <laughs> yeah. want to write books or yeah. be movie consultants they don't sell jars of borscht you see that's nice real nice right. This is yeah, I can't yeah. tell you where I got it from. Yeah. Okay, but you know what's funny is like obviously they're like bad people, you know, and they yeah. steal and they do a bunch of like fucked up stuff. But but the the bad people of today don't like give back to the community. Right. Like, nobody on Wall Street like hands out turkeys to people. Right. right. They don't tip. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They yeah. don't tip. They yeah. don't carry. Yeah. They don't carry wads of money and give it to. So it's yeah. like they don't keep like a, a an aging man in his grocery yeah. store open just because they like him. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, for hey, you, you don't go. You know, but you buy from Sal. You don't buy from anyone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't. The hip hop community, I think, has picked up from the mob, where they all do yeah, stuff like so. that. I think so. You know, uh, I would, I would love to, have, like, I would love to just have seen New York City. Like, I would love to have seen Times Square when it was shitty. Oh yeah, because it it's great. hard to imagine when you look at it now, and it's just so glossy I'm and shiny. Just and the opposite. It was it's hard for me to believe I'm even looking. Wow, like this. it's so because that was so fucking flatlined. Earl, you were around for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were. I uh, here's what's really weird. I remember one day walking down Broadway, taking a right, probably on this street, 49th Street. Yeah. Walking half a block and turning around, and going, "We're going. We're getting out of here. Fucking killed right here. That's what it felt like all the time. Really? Yeah, man. God, that is so insane. Because you yeah. hear that and like prostitution. Yeah. But the, and then Giuliani's the thing like, about the too much pornography here. Yeah. <laughs> put an end there to wasn't a. I've never seen a single prostitute that I would have been able to get a hard on. For, uh-huh. times square. <laughs> they were so fucking horrible looking. Thi- yeah. whatever, and they would reach out and grab your fucking shirt. Really? Yeah, and you had to shake it. They didn't care if you were with your Pay them to let go. Or, yeah. It's 10 bucks to let yeah. go of me. <laughs> and for some reason, people were still drawn to like Broadway. And, you know, people would still yeah. come into the city. But it was almost, I mean, it was like people that lived in New York, it would be considered like a badge of honor. Like, oh, you fucking live in New York. You must be tough. You're talking but about like even, the 80s, 90s. Yeah, the yeah. 80s. But people who even visit it 
It was like if they visited Vietnam or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, holy oh shit. yeah, I went to Times Square. New York, huh? I was yeah. in Square, man. Yeah. Times Square. <laughs> Tiananmen Square. Times Square. Wait, what is? But what is the? What was there before? Like, what before, was the infrastructure bef- that fell apart? It, that like, right, let so it, you know that used to be just the opposite. It was like fucking pure show business. There would be like acrobats. And comedians and all the vaudeville acts. Would that was all yeah. there, right? Yeah, and okay. it would be the fucking guy who was like, uh, you know, hanging off a building while people all gathered around. So people in the 70s and 80s were, isn't it a shame what happened in New York? It used to be so great. Okay. Right. I mean, it and was still pe- like theater yeah. district was still oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but okay. the, because you had no, before there was TV, there was 10 times more fucking live theater going on than right. we have now. But the funny thing is now people are like, they miss gangster shitty fucking. Oh, they, yeah. They miss it. Yeah. Wait, you know? They miss gangster shitty fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, we're going to wrap this up. Why don't you, Mike Rece- you do a plug? But do a plug like it's yeah. great. From the heart. Yeah. yeah. Mike Rossi and Sean Pan have been in the studio with us today. But like you're hearing music in okay. the background. Like uh. This is a... Okay. Big, big ending. And then Mike's podcast, The Sit Down. Hey, not yelling. Oh, okay. uh, don't I yell apologize. at me. Mike, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> the Sit Down with Mike Racine, that's available now on iTunes. And go to patreon.com slash sitdownpod. Sean Patton, he's performing tomorrow through Sunday at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Me, SeanPatton.com for tickets in all of Sean's states. Hell yeah. Uh, Earl, what are we ending this show with today? I know that you always try to grab a, a song that means a little something. Um, we're talking about Goodfellas. I want to end with a little Harry Nielsen. Ooh, I like your style. I like the way you grab have the you essence. Not, have you watched uh, the Russian uh, doll thing? Not yet. It's uh, Harry Nielsen through the entire thing. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I never song. get sick of hearing the song. Either. Every time it comes sick. up, I'm excited. Yeah. But this is this is a weird thing. This song, this is the one from Goodfellas. We're in a million different. This is uh, Jump in the Fire. Jump into the Fire. Yeah, which is a completely different sound than all yeah. the other... Sweet thing, and it's also the the wired up coke scenes yeah. that we were talking about. There it is that makes it even uh, crazier. All right, uh, you guys are fantastic. Seriously, thanks so much. Thank you, Avengers. Avengers comics, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.